If you want to pump your body and expand your mind, there's only one place to go. Mind Pump. Mind Pump. With your hosts, Sal Stefano, Adam Schaefer, and Justin Andrews. In this episode of Mind Pump. Yes. For the first 45 minutes, we do our introductory- Or maybe 55. Conversation. Mm. Yeah, Doug didn't write it down, did he? A little bit longer. (laughs) We talk about my training experiment- over the weekend, I may have uncovered mm. the holy grail of gains. Or he may have done something stupid. You have to listen to the episode to find out. Yeah, what are, the, what are those two? All day training. We talk about Justin's Treehouse. It's a new TV show for children. <laughs> <laughs> Starring, no, it's an, he's actually uh, building a treehouse in the backyard. I want a cool theme song. Yeah, he's winning the Dad of the, Aweer, the Year Award. I need to start doing better. Yeah. Then we talk about the, there's a lot of controversy over this weekend. CrossFit is letting transgender athletes compete in the gender that they identify with. Wow. Mm, this is Cross, a big deal. CrossFit with the CrossFit news, man, the last couple weeks. Yeah, let's yeah. let's uh, we give our opinions on that. I'm sure we'll rub some people the wrong way. Um, but we'll see what happens there. Then we talk about Adam's protein supplementation regime. He does have a regime. Ooh. And he does like to use Organifi Fishy. protein powder. Now, Organifi makes organic supplements. One of them is a protein powder that's plant-based that has no artificial sweeteners or colors in it. Just all the good stuff. That's right. If you go to Organifi.com forward slash Mind Pump and enter the code Mind Pump, you get 20% off everything on their site. Then we get into the questions. The first question was, what is a good approach for fat loss after you've done a reverse diet? Afterwards. Mm, After reverse cowgirl. The second question... (laughs) Another question Justin had a lot of input on. Yeah, I love these questions. <laughs> How do you create a better relationship with food and stop binging or constantly thinking about hey, food? I wine and dine my food. That's it. The third question was, can we talk about oral health and its connection to overall health? Believe it or not, uh, your oral health has a large impact on the rest of your body. We you explain that, why. Honey? That's yes. right. Be in careful what episode. you put in your mouth. That's it, Adam. Uh, and the final question Do we feel it's necessary to follow a non-compete contract when you quit one place to train at another? Justin shares his story, and you you end up finding out why his nickname is Dr. Integrity. Mm. He's got lots of integrity. Hey. (laughs) Uh, That's that's right. Also, this month, uh, MAPS Performance, this is our functional athletic-based fitness program. This one's great. By the way, look, if you're bored with your typical exercises, if you want to move and look like an ancient athlete. What's an ancient athlete? Adam's looking at me wondering what the hell I'm talking about. An ancient <laughs> like really athlete. really old. Look at the old carvings of uh, Greek statues, these Greek gods. They looked balanced. They looked muscular. They looked like they could jump, run, swim, and lift they and They were wrestle. not wearing squeams. And do, they you th- were- do, you re- do you think they really looked like that, or do you think like sculptures are like Instagram now today? Maybe. Photoshopped and valencia would up. I mean, Maybe. It's a valid point. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. valencia would up. <laughs> Definitely valencia That's my favorite filter. <laughs> yeah. Nonetheless, uh, mass, performance, mass performance is designed to get to those types of goals. It's a long program. I think it's one of our longest programs. There's four phases in it if you're advanced. It's pretty awesome. It's half off, 50% off the normal price. I don't think we've ever done a mass performance 50% we have not. Off sale. Nope. Uh, here's what Better you got to get on it. Here's what you got to do though. You got to go to mindpumpmedia.com and you have to use the discount code GREEN50. That's all one word and it's 50 the the number 50 so it's GREEN number 50. Also on that site you can find all of our bundles like our super bundle which is a year of exercise program. It's a whole year planned out for you. So you can find all of our bundles and the 50% off mass performance with the discount code GREEN50 at mindpumpmedia.com. T-shirt time! And it's T-shirt time. Oh, yeah. Give us some shirts. We had 21 reviews. Okay, okay. And we're giving out six shirts. Hey, you know what? Right, Are these okay. the reviews that would have came in after all of our uh, Bishop Baron people? Uh no. Okay, so it'd be the next one. No, next next round. Okay, I'd love to see what those. Yeah, I know that's what I'm waiting to hear. What the hell those? Great information. Oh my god, I had to put earmuffs on though. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So the six winners are MJF D seventy nine, Ella Baguli twenty two, the real dog, KMG OG T one seven three four. And sharpen the sword. All of you are winners. Send the name I just read and your shirt size and address to iTunes at mindpumpmedia.com and we'll get that shirt right out to you. 
I've told you guys that I've been kind of, I've been maintaining like uh, weight, right? I really haven't. Yeah. So, and you know, I, I always tell people like, this is, this, this is the mind fuck place to be. You know, it's like, mm. I'm not, we're on this challenge. We're on this. You don't see the scale change. Yeah. yeah. I hate yeah. That. It is. It's, it's, it's a mind fuck. Yeah, and I'm right there. And so I had this, uh, you know, I was, oh man, should I just cut hard for a few days or a week or what that, like wanting to, wanting to see some good movement on the scale and in the mirror, like a big difference. Um, and it's, it's crazy how long I've been doing this for and how many times I've got shredded and done, like how many times I have to do the self-talk. And luckily yesterday I was lifting and I, I haven't lifted with my belt in a little while. And you, would you go down another? Yeah. There was a significant difference in my belt and yeah. I was like, Oh, Ooh. I have changed. Yeah. It. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I, yeah, like, I know. Oh, thank God. You know what I'm saying? Like you don't do tape measurements when you, when you no. monitor it's all, it's all pictures. Yeah. I yeah. just, I just look and you know, like I, it, that just the tape measure thing. Well, I mean, if I had it set up in my bathroom, maybe I'll do that. I know Doug was saying that he did that. I'm totally not against that. I think that's a great a great mm. tool to do that. Yeah, I had kind of a moment with that because I was getting a little frustrated with my strength gains, you know, like uh, just cutting down and like losing weight and all that. And like I started doing body weight exercises downstairs with my kids and I was starting to do stuff with the rings again that I couldn't do, you know, for a long time because like just my joints hurt and my elbows and my shoulders hurt. Not because you were fat. Because I was fat. <laughs> For sure. That's, that's 100% the reason. Uh, but yeah, now I was like going through all the old stuff that I used to do. Like, and it was fucking, oh my God, I felt great. You feel good. You yeah. know, I was starting to back off the fat jokes, but I'm going to bring it back on because I have so many fucking bald DMs now, dude. <laughs> do I you must, really? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you're welcome. My DMs are already hard to keep uh, up with. Like, and I apologize for those that I finally got back uh, to that I think were sitting in my, some of them were sitting there for at least five, six days. People giving you advice on how to, how to, no, no, no. They, they actually, a lot. A lot of people were interested in what it was you know what was that what was the what was the brand or what was that thing or what were you using and so i had i had, I had an extra probably 50 dms this last week yeah. of just straight about balding and stuff just a so, walking infomercial uh, it's all right we all have one bad trait i mean yeah, if, we mixed, yeah, if we combined yeah. each other we'd be a, it'd be terrible right <laughs> fat bald and you know whatever yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. anyway dude this weekend ugly, I, we, I we, I just, I was I just gonna ugly. say we yeah. didn't get yours there you going <laughs> 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 real quick to point yeah, out, yeah, yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah. fat, bald, yeah. and you know, yeah. make something up. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's, it's pretty tough because I glossed over. Yeah, I'm so awesome. Yeah. 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 Fat, bald, and handsome. You know what? Yeah. Too bad. <laughs> did you do this weekend? I did my my training experiment. Tell us, please. Yeah. I was so excited to hear this, bro. So, so for the listeners who didn't listen to the last episode, where I kind of broke down what I was doing. So, I did this with Jessica, and we have a garage gym, so it works out well for us. But what we did is we. Every hour starting at, now I was going to start at 7 a.m., but we ended up starting a little later. I started at 9 a.m. because I wanted to go into this with really good sleep and I wanted to control all the factors so that really the only thing that I could, I could you know, uh, I guess judge was the, the workout itself. I don't want to go into it not sleeping that yeah, well, not having a good diet. Shit. Exactly. I wanted to test it out and, you know, so it was perfect. So we started at 9 a.m. so I could sleep, uh, you know, in and have a nice night's, night rest. So 9 a.m., 11 a.m., basically every other hour, I did the same workout. And what I did was is I picked <clears throat> three exercises, and I did five reps of three sets of every exercise. And the weight, the weight that I picked was, I guess, moderate intensity. Yeah, so, well, tell, tell us what exercises and what weight you picked. So what I did was I, I tried, because I figured that would be the hardest part, would be picking the weight, because y you want it to be easy enough to be able to do this all day, but you don't want Not it to too be easy. too easy and you don't want it to be too hard because yeah. you want to be able to, I, I wanted to be able to maintain the same right. throughout because they want to walk the next day. Yeah. But, well, not only that, but my, my, I, my idea behind this was that I was be training my central nervous system the entire time. It's the same movement, same weight each time and to observe what the effects were. So I did, I picked squats, bench press, and barbell rows. I didn't do deadlifts because I didn't want to squat and deadlift and in the same all day. And because deadlifts, in my experience, and you know, maybe you guys feel the same way, it's one of the most difficult exercises to do a shit ton of volume and frequency. It oh tends to yeah. tends to break your body down more than than any other exercise. So I did squats, barbell row, and bench press. And the weights that I picked was I did 225 for squats. So I tried to pick a weight that I thought would be challenging to do, you know, 13, 14 reps for each exercise. And I, I would pick like, you know, something to do five with, right? So I did barbell squats, 225. I did 185 for bench press. 
and I did 185 for barbell row. Uh, now, and I, what are, how much are you repping all three of those? I'm only doing five reps, three sets. Okay. Now, in hindsight, I, I could I should have gone heavier with my bench and definitely with my row, but that's okay. It was a first time. Squat, I think, was about right. So what I thought would happen was that I would go into the day, do my first workout. I would feel tight because it's in the morning. I'd have to warm up, whatever. But that I would notice strength gains throughout the day, especially after two or three workouts, because the CNS is like fucking right. prime. Honing in on that. Were you yeah. right or no? And then towards the end of the day, I thought I would get fatigued and whatever. It, exactly what happened. It's exa- it, it was so weird. I have the notes that I wrote for the workout uh, you know, that I, I wrote down. But So I started – so I'll tell you kind of the first thing. So first thing I did was I ate – Four egg yolks, uh, some bacon, and some gluten-free cereal. So what the goal was, I want some cholesterol in my blood. I want a little bit of protein, and I want some carbohydrates. And and the other part of this was I wanted to fuel my body the entire time because I figured I may be really sending a loud anabolic signal, and I want to maximize it. And cholesterol is is used quite a bit to repair and rebuild. So throughout the day, you know that's kind of the theme was cholesterol, some carbs. And some protein. Now, did you eat the same meal throughout the day? No, I changed it. So the first workout I wrote down, I felt tight, um, and I I picked the weights I felt would be challenging enough. Then I did workout two. Workout two, mobility much better, felt stronger on all lifts. Workout three, felt even stronger. It's a fucking trip. By the time I got to workout three, I get under the bar, and I just, and it felt like I'd taken, no joke, 15, 20 pounds off the bar. It was really trippy by the third workout. Fourth workout, I still felt pretty strong, but I could tell I was starting to get a little bit, you know, tight, a little bit tighter. I wasn't as good as a third workout. That's when I had some chicken, some broccoli, I had some cherries. Then, uh, oh, and then I threw in some egg yolks with a protein shake. And then Jessica and I, you know, we had in between these sessions we were doing work, uh, like 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 business type work, and I was writing. And one thing that I noticed is it really sparked incredible creativity and focus. I was eight because I was active and then I'd sit down and write. Mm-hmm. It was like taking breaks and then when I come back, I was really sharp. So this is another strategy is, you know, if you ever have a day of just working, it may be a good time to combine the two because you get a lot done. So I wrote a twenty five hundred word guide that will end up, you know, putting together and it'll be available for free soon. But it was a really good guide and I wrote it like faster and more I guess more, um, what's the word, focused than I... Than Concise. I, yeah, it was really, really good. So that was interesting. Then we did a hike in between uh, workout four and workout five. That might have been a mistake. It might have been a mistake to do the hike because we did a 45-minute a mm. hike. It was hot. I'd been working out all day. Oh, I started yeah. to feel my joints start to get a little inflamed. Mm. And my left knee started bothering me a little bit. And now, this is before I did this workout... My left knee got a little bit inflamed, and it has to do with my ankle because my left ankle. Did you go like hike a place? Like, where you guys go up yeah. hill? Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, dude, you're supposed to just take a stroll. Yeah, well, and that's that, all I wanted you to well, do. Well, you know why? Because I was feeling so good. Well, after the third workout, you I was asshole. like, you know what I mean? I was feeling, <laughs> and that's hey, that's this is a learning yeah, lesson, that's right? Typical. So we did the hike. Uh, we came back. Then I did. Then we did the fifth workout. Jessica chose deadlifts, which I thought might not be the best exercise, and, and I was right. She started to feel her back get a little tweaked. So she couldn't do any more after she did like one or two sets and she's like, I'm done. I'm not going to do the third one. I was doing my workout and I was feeling stiff. Like I started feeling stiff. Then I laid down to take a nap, took a nap, woke up, start feeling really stiff, did some stretches and decided to stop at five. So five was for me for that day. I only did five. I had planned about six or seven, but I stopped at five, uh, which is a total of, uh, let's see, five times three. So it's 15 sets of every exercise throughout the day, same way. And you did three. So you did that's 45 sets. Total. Yeah, total. That's, that's and I've never done 15 yeah, sets of, of squats in, one day. in yeah. one day. I've never done that before. I've just squats, right? Right. Mm-hmm. Or of just rows or of just. So I thought to myself, like, this is going to be interesting to see what happened. Now, here's the other part that's weird. Throughout the day, I started feeling uh, like more pumped. Like my muscles were feeling kind of fuller and bigger and I thought you know it might maybe I'm imagining things let's see what happens tomorrow wake up the next day for sure dude I go put on my sweats they feel a little tighter my legs are rubbing together a little bit I I grew I grew a little bit of muscle I don't think it's inflammation because my soreness 
is remarkably lower than I thought. That's the other shocking thing that I was wrong on. Oh. I thought I'd be hammered the next day. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But no, I, I I wasn't hammered at all. Now, here's the crazy thing. <clears throat> Imagine I had if I had done the same workout but all together. Mm-hmm. Imagine I did 15 sets of squats, right. 15 in bench and 15 sets of rows all in 2 or 3 hours. Lots of damage. I would have been fucked up. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But because I spread it out the way I did, it's a way of well, it's a way of increasing your volume right there without like in one workout spreading it out so you can actually recover and do it again. Yes, because I thought this might be like a once a month thing, but you could potentially maybe do this once a week. Uh, you know what? I'm I maybe you're right. No. That's something I'm gonna start. I mean, it's with. a lot of commitment, right? Like that's yeah. a, it's you guys put a whole day around that. So yeah, that's, that's tough for most thought, people. After you did it, I thought this would be cool to do this and and start doing this at least once a month. Commit myself to doing something similar. I really like it. The only thing I think I would do different is I would I would walk. Mm. You know, like a light stroll. Yeah, li- a real light stroll after. Maybe we should do that as part of our practice one of the days. You know what I mean? We podcast, then we go work out, then we do business work then we work out we do like a whole day like Dude, that that why, would be why that, not that would be cool to do right? schedule a whole day just together. for us to do that yeah, right. yeah. And i'm telling you guys it, i'd it, love it it is a total it is a, an absolute trip on how you feel and i thought i'd be slammed and here's the thing when you're trying to build muscle what are you always what are you always negotiating what are you always balancing damage with the muscle building signal it's always a, it's like a you know it's, it's always Inverse a relationship yeah and it's just something you have to contend with yeah and if there was no look if we could have you know infinite levels of damage and recovery then we would just work out and beat the shit of ourselves all day and we'd have great results but you always have to balance the two that's where and, anabolic steroids come in <laughs> exactly boom and this would have no way in hell would i have been able to do that all that work in one full workout and felt as good as I did, yeah. you know, and good as I feel today. Today I go, so now, you know, yesterday I took off. So yesterday I didn't work out at all. And we just went to the beach and relaxed and laid out all day long. I figured the sun would be good for recovery. Did you go to refuge? No, we actually just went to oh, okay. uh, Capitola and just just laid out. Oh, you up in my area and mm-hmm. you didn't hit me yeah. up? You no, no, we wanted to be alone. <laughs> <Screw> <laughs> I got a little you, too much sun though, dude. I got a little, believe it or not, a little burn. No, no sunscreen, bro. Four or five hours in the sun. Look at that, Justin. That's what you look like after 10 minutes. I don't know. Yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> I get really red, though. Yeah. yeah I'm just lobstered yeah. out. But, uh, but yeah, it's it's pretty trippy, and I think this may be an effective way to dramatically increase volume and frequency and signal while modifying or mitigating damage is just doing this, mm. you know, spreading out the whole day. So, I don't know, man. It's interesting. Yeah, it is interesting. You know what? Did you happen to total up? Because it, it would be great to see, like, the total volume. Because another thing you did also do that you have to take into consideration is you you significantly lowered the weight from what you would do five reps normally. Sure. Because if you were lifting like a normal workout, I know you would do more than 225 mm-hmm. for five squats. Like, that's just not – I know you can do more than that. Same thing probably with bench and then with mm-hmm. with row. So that's so l- figuring out what the total volume is. See what that looks like, and see what that looks like. Yeah. And, and now I think <clears throat> now here's the other thing. If I did 15 sets straight of all those exercises with that weight for five reps, oh, I think I would have started failing at the end. Even though it's light, imagine doing 15 sets of squats, five reps, 225. 15 sets of whatever, right? right, right. It, 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 would, it would have been challenging. No, you. no, that's extremely challenging. One of the things I used to always do when I get back to training, like first leg day was literally 10 sets of 10 of, of 135 of squats. Yeah, exactly. And that's, and that's more brutal than you think mm-hmm. it is. Like mm-hmm. if you haven't lifted it in a, in a while, like in, it would just be me being off for a few weeks or a month. And then going back to legs, like doing 135, 10 for 10, you know, 10 sets of 10 so is there's two, brutal. So there's two variations of this that I'm going to do next. <clears throat> One variation is I'm going to do singles. So I'm going to pick a heavy weight that I can do for moderate intensity for a single where I can, you know, I'm going to feel it, but not, it's not my max. So that's the next thing I'm going to do. I'm going to do this all day long with singles. My opinion is, my hmm. theory is that I'll be able to do more workouts that way uh, because it's just less reps, right? Then the second variation is I'm going to pick auxiliary type bodybuilding, like pumping type movements, and then do the same thing and then keep the reps at the in the 12 rep range. Yeah. So go and do like, you know, like flies for chest and really get a good pump and pick like maybe four exercises and do a higher volume bodybuilding type thing. Yeah, I wonder if you did that, um, like the singles, if, if you would get closer to your PR and then even exceed your PR just because of being so like consistently driving that signal and then like towards you know the middle of 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 the day you did a few workouts in like i bet you could lift a substantial amount of i i think dude i'm telling you by the third or fourth workout it's the weirdest feeling i yeah. 
I, you know, remember it's every other hour. So I did the workout and it only took me 25 to 30 minutes to do the workout because enough time to change the bar or whatever. So I, I, you know, I do that. Then I'd have an hour and a half of nothing. So I'm just sitting there writing. You would think that I'd have to get under the bar, kind of warm up like I did the first time I did it. What I always prime and all that stuff. No, man, get under the bar. Boom. And it was like, whoa, this is weird. Like I, this is really, and it got better and better. And then it started declining after about the fourth one. So mm. kind of interesting, right? Yeah. It's re- really interesting. Yeah. I think it'd be kind of, I think I love Justin's idea of us like scheduling that. I think that'd be cool to schedule. All We'd be us. productive as hell. Yeah. yeah. That, that part I liked, you know, what did, how long did it take you then to knock out the, the guy? <laughs> Bro, I, like I said, I did it in like an hour and a half. Oh, wow. Yeah. Like, I, and it was, and it was an hour and a half on fire. It wasn't like. I went back and read it, and I was like, "Oh, this is this is really good." I was very concise. Jessica too; she did a bunch of stuff for you know st- some stuff that she's doing, and she was like, "I feel very focused." And it's because you're moving. Mm-hmm. And what does Paul Check always say in between sets? Do something creative yeah. mm-hmm. in between sets to get the you know parasympathetic, sympathetic, get the brain to you know go into the creative versus right the, left brain. Yeah, yeah so I don't know. It's it's pretty interesting. So very, what very you interesting. started at nine? Where did you? So what time did you finally finish? Uh, what is it? Nine. I did nine, eleven, one. Uh, three and five. Okay. So five o'clock. So nine to five. Oh, like a, a days full, w- full days of work. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> Basically. Yeah. No, that's cool. Basically. Yeah. It's. I think it. I think that would be a reasonable thing for us to do as a as a work day once a month easily because into like a nine to five and then all day long we just. Do you know, that. I think it could be a thing. I really do. I know there's a lot of people listening right now that are mm-hmm. hardcore. I tell you what, if I was. You know, eighteen year old, nineteen year old kid listening. I'll think to about podcasts. Col- like a college. Like, you know, how many times does a kid have like a Saturday where he's got to like study all week? Exactly. Long? Right. Mm-hmm. For, like, how cool would it be to break up your studying with these little short workouts if you have access? to You know like, what a- I would have done? I would have taken my car, my my computer, my books, and I would have lifted and then gone to the coffee shop and worked or whatever next door to the gym, and then gone back to the gym and then go back to the coffee shop and just gone back and forth. So productive. Yeah. Become so productive. But then you cool. lose your Wi-Fi password. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> you got to only log in once. Exactly. <laughs> hey, hey, what happened? Shot down true? your idea. Boom. Is that true? That coffee yeah. shops, you oh, can yeah. only log in once? Yeah. Oh, oh I didn't know. Stupid. They time you out. Well, a lot of them do. I, mean, I didn't you know, know maybe that. Maybe some of them do. I mean, you're yeah. the coffee shop. I go all the time. Yeah, that's why I like, I make sure like I, I, I don't like, I try to do everything offline as long as I can because sometimes I'll stay there for a long time. Even if you say something to them, they'll still tell you. Oh, can't uh, I'm it. sure if you get if you talk to them, I'm yeah. just saying they get times out. Yeah, so, I didn't know that. Yeah, interesting, dude. Tell us well, about your. You, the hell out of there. you were telling me this morning, and then you stopped uh, about your the work you're doing on the treehouse. Yeah, stuff. so this weekend I I started I started the uh, the work on the on the treehouse. So I went and got all the lumber and everything and. Uh, you know, put put some of the the um, the skeleton of it and the framing of it, um, and worked on that. And so I got both boys involved, and they were like super excited about it. But like the thing was, they really wanted to help. So I was like trying my best. Like I'm really not good at slowing down when I'm in work mode. And I've been really trying to work on this because I remember as a kid, like I always wanted to help my dad. Like if he was working on something or like doing something with the car, like I'm like, Hey, teach me like, like all this stuff. And so I just decided, I'm like, you know what? This is like a very impressionable time and this is for them. So I'm going to really try and include them in the process. And so (laughs) I'm like unloading everything and I could do it like four or five of these, uh, you know, pieces of wood at a time and, and, throw it over my shoulder and get it up there and like get it done. But I just decided that like my youngest, he's five years old and he's like, I want to help dad. I want to help. I'm like, all right, let me figure this out. So I would just grab one plank at a time and like he holds the the front of it, but I'm like, like holding most of it, you know? And and he's like, and we're going up the stairs together and he's just like, yeah. And we, I literally did that with every single piece of, you know and he wasn't complaining he was going out and getting no out. yeah he went with me wow, every single time it took about 25 minutes to unload my <laughs> truck but you know he felt so good about it he's like yeah like i helped you dad i'm like yeah you did bud dude yeah, you know what that's totally. gonna do right when you know because he's gonna have tree houses in the back and anytime you give something to a kid you, you like to see them take pride in it and take care of it mm-hmm. because he feels like he's helped you I bet he'll take better pride and care like of ownership it. of it. Yeah, like yeah. hey, don't write on my treehouse. That's I helped build that one. Right, right. You know what I mean? When his buddies come over and stuff. Yeah, exactly, dude. Yeah, so I have it all. Like, and I got all the blueprints. I, I spent time with my dad, really drawing it up. So I'm just I'm getting better too about like tackling 
like parts of things at a time and not just being like my normal self where I have like this like elaborate design of everything and I'm going to attack all these, fu- I'm going to do like the fucking entire forest, you know? <laughs> I'm like, no, I'm just building the platform first. <laughs> That's it. You it's know, like a, it's a millennium Falcon. Oh like, man. <laughs> the replica. Whoa. Oh, dude, don't get me started, bro. <laughs> With all these trap doors and fucking ropes everywhere. And oh my God, my brain goes crazy. Are you really, oh, this is a place to hide so you can fire your, exactly, your dude. Yeah. I'm like, I can make it way more fun by doing this and so and my brother already has he had like i found out i thought he built a tree house i went to his uh his his daughter's birthday party and like they had one i'm like you fucking have a tree house he i found out he paid for some guys to build it and i was like oh you fucker (laughs) i I thought for a second it like got my ego i'm like hey man you know i was the builder (laughs) you know so that's that's what i would do i just hire someone (laughs) i might hire justin (laughs) absolutely (laughs) no way i'm not for hire at all although katrina's tripping out right now because we you know here we are this our whole weekend was uh around getting this house ready right and when i when i sold my house and moved in with her like i get i got rid of i totally purged and got rid of so much of my stuff including any sort of tools or anything i had around the house when i moved in with her so and i'm like i openly admit i'm not mr handy like we joke about this all the time i can't screw in a light bulb but i mean i've also been a bachelor since i was 17 years old and lived my own for a long time so very capable of doing all these things right i just don't like to you know <laughs> yeah. and i openly admit that like hey listen i don't like to do this shit but yeah i've had to do a lot of that stuff growing up and my dad worked construction so when my dad worked construction many summers i worked with him so i know how to use all those tools <laughs> right so now we're in our own place and i'm like and it's just her and I, and we got a new thing, and we're setting everything all up. So I, I swung by and picked up like all these tools. She comes home and she sees me like working on the house. She's like, "Where's this? Where did this come? Who's from? this guy? Yeah, where does? <laughs> I didn't even know you knew how to do that. <laughs> like whatever, dude. I mean, you had great oh, sex yeah. afterwards. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> You're wearing a tool belt. She's like, "Oh my god." <laughs> <laughs> Women love that. You know what I mean? They love it when you like oh, fix. Yeah. Dude, Stop. that is the move. You put a tool belt on, take your shirt off, you just walk around. Oh, hey, you know, kid, how's it going? What, what are you doing in there? Yeah. To hang a picture. And then you just like walk away. <laughs> to go hang a You walk picture. away quickly. Yeah. It's this big. You don't oh, even do anything. What? Yeah. Yeah, no, no, to hang a, like, an yeah. eight by 10 oh, picture on It fucking wall. works, dude. Either that or a cowboy hat. One of the two. Yeah, yeah I, I, I put together something from, what's that? Ikea. That's what I did the other day. <laughs> The, awesome. I Ikea doesn't things. even require tools. Oh, I no, hate those. No, it oh, doesn't. They're so flimsy and shitty. Maybe the little Ellen Ridge, that's about it, right? Yeah, that's the little it. Yeah. Which I save for some reason. I don't know why I always save those. Those Ellen oh, Ridge yeah. yeah, like throws away. Dude. Dude. I got a shit ton of them. <laughs> hey, did you guys see the 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 CrossFit news? Yes. Oh, yeah, you sent that wow. over. And that, was, that was very interesting. So they're allowing. How the fuck are they going to do this, They're bro? allowing transgender athletes to compete in the category that they identify with. Right. So. If you're if you're a biological male but you identify as a female, you can now qualify for or you can tr- you can compete in the female category and vice versa. Ooh, I would I love d- to see all the description and the you know the, the like everything they have to outline. Yeah, what as, do, what like, do, what constitutes identify with? Right, exactly. Do you have to look like, like yeah, exactly? Could like could Justin like, sign up exactly. and be like I identify? Like, as a no, woman. I feel like a girl, so I'm gonna compete against the girls yeah i don't know dude i'm not quite sure of what the you know maybe doug can read this article and look it up for us while we're talking but it's it, like, it, can you still have a thing you yeah know what i mean that's what i mean yeah. like how, how no i don't think you have to have a, a sex change i don't think you oh, have wow. to be yeah i don't i don't think that's the case that's, but but we should we should look it up just to double here's the here's are, are, are you starting to see now very I, interesting you mentioned this to us over the weekend i haven't like dug into it and looked at like is there gonna be is there blowback from other athletes right now i mean if i'm a chick i'm pissed right now yeah. i mean i would imagine if, I, right? if i've been if i've been competing in crossfit for the last three or four years as a, as a female and a, and a born female right and then this happens i'm i'm fucking not i'm not too happy about that yeah i right. here, here's here's i think crossfit is Okay, because what just happened? What just happened before this? I think they you should, had athletes. I think they should be able to compete, but you just compete at what you were born as. Well, look, look, this is how it is. Yeah, look, look at what. Sorry. Ju- look at what just happened. You just had athletes banned for four years. Mm-hmm. Okay, what's her name? Got banned for four years for having a minuscule, yeah, the microscopic amount. amount of a Sarm or of a peptide. secretagogue peptide or something in her blood. Right, a, yeah. a a minuscule amount. It was a very small amount. Banned for four years. Basically, career's over. In the same week, they now say, hey, 
uh, you can take testosterone or whatever, or natural, you know, genetics that are going to make you probably stronger, and we'll let you compete. I, I don't, I don't understand this. Yeah, how are yeah, they going to like like manage and monitor that? There. Well, look, here's the bottom line. Politi because, because, because. Uh, a female that is now identifying as a male. Well, I guess that wouldn't matter as much, right? So it's we're you're not going to see any of them. You're not going to. see They're that. not going to kick. They're ass. not going to. No. Yeah, but, it's, but I, hey, look, here's a deal, okay? Because I know people are getting mad right now, okay? Political correctness now has gone fucking insane. We've lost our minds. It's okay to be logical. It's okay to be objective. For sure, every single human being, every person, every individual should be treated with a level of respect. Um, and should be judged on their actions for sure. Okay, mm -hmm. but there's a reason why in sports there's a male and female category. Otherwise, erase it. Yeah, they're biologically different. Erase it. Have everybody compete together. Yeah. But there's a reason, and it's some of it has to do with testosterone, but some of it has to do with the fact that males have a, an, a you know a different genes, and that also makes us bigger and stronger. It's not just testosterone. Mm. It just isn't. If you took a guy and took him off testosterone. Look, Adam's testosterone levels were zero for a while when he went off steroids, still stronger than the average woman, right. still much stronger than the average woman, even with zero testosterone. You probably mm -hmm. had less than, right. than most women when you went off. This is the case with, because with, what you're going to see that happens is you're going to see men who would have never ranked in competition as men who are going to move over and going through all the hormone therapy and whatever and you know shutting down, fine, you're off testosterone, you're on estrogen, whatever. They're going to go in this this female category, and you're going to start seeing them kick ass yeah. at this thing, just because genetically speaking, men are, you know, we're bigger, we're, we're bigger and stronger, and it's not just testosterone. There's genes that, that well, and there's that money well. on the line. There's sponsorship. I I don't know. It just gets it, it's so gray. Like I, I like I'm just so curious to see if they they decided to do this right. But like, how do you handle all the like impending questions like like what's the right amount you know that that you're going to tolerate as far as like you know adding hormones and like you know where where's the line They're like it, it's just interesting because now all of a sudden that that line is so obscure like i don't know how you're gonna be able to manage that i think i think there's going to be a little bit of blowback i don't know if this is necessary i know that the olympics are had their own policy now you know that's similar to this, and I mean, look. Here's, I mean, CrossFit's a private organization; they can do whatever they want. Right, right. So they can say anybody, and I'm okay with that. I'm not saying we should make laws or whatever. No, right? no, do I do whatever. Agree. Yeah, for sure. I just but, think it's a silly move. Uh, I do. I don't know. I, I, don't, I think there's. I mean, it it would be it makes sense to me if there was like a third category, right? Like they, you could com compete if you were like you know transgender, and you could compete against other transgender. Yeah, because you you do have real advantages if you were biological male you went through puberty um and then you decide on you know you you want to transition to becoming a, a female and you go on female hormones and you block testosterone all that stuff you still have significant uh advantages now I, i've heard people argue and say and this is a stupid argument i know women that are stronger than men and i know men that are, yeah of course of course yeah. you know the but, now the question well, i but have if you about take the, outliers. if you take the 1000 most strongest women in the world and the 1,000th most strongest men in the world, there's no competition. Because at that level, at when you go to the extreme ends of the spectrum, you know, we're, we just have these genetic advantages. Now, if you go in the middle, yeah, of course, I could take the top female CrossFit competitor. Look, we just, we just did some film with uh, a strongman, female strongman competitor in our facility. What's her last name? Kristen, I uh, can't remember her last name. Graham. Graham. She's stronger than most men. For sure. The girl she, can deadlift oh, yeah, 425. Dude. It's but impressive. But if you compare her against strong men who are at her level, right. there's no, there's not, no even close. not even close. So it's it's going to be – and here's the thing. I'm surprised women haven't been up in arms about mm -hmm. this because mm -hmm. if I was a female ca so competing, I'd be – Maybe bit. that's because there's not a lot of men that are changing into women that are wanting to compete in CrossFit. Maybe it's more likely the other way around. I think you're going to see it. I think you'll see more. Do you think so? I absolutely do think. I think. Well, I wouldn't. I wouldn't bet against you on that because mm -hmm. I. I mean, we know. We know what athletes that are that want to be the best, right? That want to win a gold. That want to be considered the fittest in the world as a CrossFitter. Yeah. We know what they're willing to sacrifice in order to be that. So, I. That being said, I know people that would potentially mm -hmm. change their sex just well, to win. It's interesting because you've already seen. Um, we've mentioned the MMA fighter that did this, but also there's that powerlifter down. Oh, in weightlifter. 
Taylor, I believe. Yeah, it was yeah. like smashing all the records, you know, that like previous women had before. But it's just like it. It's just come on, man. <laughs> it used to be used to be like not just a guy, like a huge burly guy, yeah. you know, like changing into a female. Well, why, if, why it would, if it why doesn't, would, why wouldn't we just keep a, a separate category? Yeah. Because it's political correctness run awry. It's literally so crazy. We want to be so it's virtue signaling. We yeah. want to be so inclusive that what we're going to do is we're going to do things that aren't that are illogical. It, it just illogical. look here's the deal. If it's if it's logical, show me all the transgender women that are dominating in in in, in competition you're not like i'm talking about excuse me transgender men right like women who were born biological women then who yeah, go like, and compete against men show me the the the, the those cat that category and show me how they're going to dominate they won't you're going to see a lot of women go over to competition maybe compete as men because they're going to transition they're going to have a very tough time because guys have been guys you know biologically for their whole lives and now on the flip, and, you're going to see you're lots about, of, and you're talking about at the competitive level. That's what I mean. So you're talking about the outliers, the people that are the best of the best. So yeah. you're, you're going to get your ass kicked on that side, and yeah. then the other side, it's not fair. Yeah, mm -hmm. and so I just, <sighs> I, I don't, I don't, and then again, same week, you know, they're they're taking athletes uh, who had small amounts of not even anabolics, but of like gray market type substances, and they're banned for four years. Well, that's that's a huge point. I mean, I, like, how, what, what do they say to that? Like, has anybody criticized them on that yet? Yeah, I mean, how, how mad would you be, if, yeah. you know, if, if you're one of these athletes and you, they, they you're caught. just trying to get a little competitive advantage, you know, now somebody coming in with a huge competitive advantage. Yeah, yeah. So I don't uh, I don't know. We'll see what the market So what says. do you do if you're Greg Glassman, though? What do you do? Because he's probably, this had to have happened from pressures, right, of right. Transgenders wanting to compete mm -hmm. and feeling. Well, that I believe there's a lawsuit beforehand with this girl that's in the picture. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember seeing that a long, uh, a while back. Oh, did you know that's how? No, that yeah. there was a lawsuit. Oh, there was a there was a transgender athlete. That yeah, wanted, yeah. I remember reading uh -huh, that. Uh huh. I and she and it. she wanted to compete. And yeah. She wanted she to wanted to compete. They wouldn't let her compete uh, as as a female. So. Um, I think that, yeah, maybe it was social pressures in, in the state today, you know, where they probably just were like, okay. So this, this is, this is a yeah. picture of a, a formerly male. Yes. Okay. And then she's just, and she's now, I feel so, I don't know how to fucking say yeah, it. Phrase it all. Right. I, I, I know yeah. where I'm fucking politically correct. I don't want to get murdered I by I think everybody. just transgender female. Yeah. So yeah. she's a transgender female. Yes, right. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Yep. Yep. And she sued. She sued CrossFit before. I believe so. Yes. Oh, I did yeah. not know that. Yeah. Well, we got to. We'll double check on yeah, that. We'll, but we'll check on. I'm look it up. Pretty Dutch sure. Yeah, I, I, I remember it. Yeah. I. I so yeah. then they be getting price. So great. So what do you do? You're Greg Glassman. You're getting sued because you you don't have a place for them right now. Mm -hmm. So this you know what's is your funny? You know here's here's what's funny. Okay. Imagine if Greg Glassman is like, hey, you know what? Let's let's say, let's say he took it to the fiftieth degree, right? And he said, you know what? You're right. Uh, gender shouldn't matter. From now on, there's no male or female category. Everybody competes against each other. I'm doing the right thing, aren't I? Imagine the outcry. Oh. Imagine if he did that. Everybody's like, yeah, that's not fair. Yeah. So instead, they're doing this, which is... Less fair. Yeah, if you want to go, if you want to, <laughs> yeah, if you right. want to go, if you want to go that route, then just open it's it. It's just not fair. Right. I mean, right? There's a best person. Can we yeah. admit that? Yeah, just open it. The best athlete, and that's all we're gonna do. It doesn't matter if you're male, female, transgender. I don't care. Everybody compete against each other. Yeah, we will just open another yeah. class. I mean, like, another open. Imagine if you're Emily Abbott right now, who you know, I, I listened to that episode of uh, where she got interviewed, where she talked about how she, her boyfriend did the. The you know the substance of under. Can we talk about that for a second? Yeah. <laughs> Can we talk? I want to hear your guys' opinion on this because I listened to it also. Yeah. And I know there's a lot of people that are out there supporting her, but I'm just gonna I'm gonna say something that's gonna piss a lot of people off. That I this Let, is the, let's hear your theory because I, I I agreed with it when you said it. This is the feeling that I have. Okay. It sounds like to me that I've got a boyfriend who's taking these SARMs. Right. That tells me, okay, as the as the CrossFit. Yeah, they're that, not going to test you for this. They're not going to test caught. you for this. Ch try this out. It's working great for me. I like it. Mm -hmm. Tries it out. It gets popped. The, and the reason why I say that is when you listen to her, the the animosity that she has towards him still. Oh yeah. I mean, you can't blame the guy. She if completely blames him. She right. says it's oh, I f she feels like she's she's resentful because he was taken and didn't tell her. Right. And then he'd kiss her afterwards. Which but. that to me too. You're married, okay? 
and not or engaged, or engaged, engaged yeah. right? Your fiance, right? So, and you're you're taking something on a daily basis, and you don't know what he's taking. So, I, I call bullshit on that. Mm-hmm. Uh, but that's possible. There's a possibility that they have a relationship where they don't communicate very well, and they don't share those types of things with each other. I mean, I most certainly never would have tried to hide any of my steroids or anything from Katrina. Sure. She's known everything that I've ever taken. So. I already think that's kind of bullshit, but maybe it is. But then, it, then the the animosity towards him. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's an accident. Like you're kissing and stuff like that. Like if he doesn't know any better, if that's the case, yeah, and then it how, really does feel like he so, closed her on this idea, and then it didn't work out for her. And then, oh yeah, because no. who who would have thought that they would have tested for that? Right. You know what I mean? Because it's one of those you know weird gray yeah, market, gray market type. things. Yeah, yeah. So so I smell bullshit. I do yeah. too. Yeah. I do too. Now that being said, is it possible? that there could have been some cross-contamination from him having it in his mouth, she kisses him, and it gets in her bloodstream. Yes, it's possible. Is it likely? No, extremely unlikely. Extreme. That being said, the amount that she tested positive for, she's making the case. Now, I don't see. I don't know what the blood results say, so this is out of her mouth. Right. But she says it was, and I forgot like the amount. Minuscule. But it was a small. Yeah, it was very small. Yeah, it was like 0.002 nano. It was like yeah, it so was like you know it feels like she 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 went off of it and tried to see if it would get out of her system. It feels yeah. Like, yeah. But that being said, here you are. You're a female competitor. You've been competing in CrossFit for a while. You've been a great spokesperson. One of the more popular athletes. You know, working hard, whatever. And you get caught with a minuscule amount of a gray market drug that you think or you say you didn't take on purpose or maybe did whatever. But not only you banned, you're basically lost your career. Done. You're right, never right. going to compete in yeah, CrossFit. Four again. years to be yeah. out of a sport like and, that when yeah, you're at your prime. Yeah, is and a, w- and a week later, a week later, they're like, "Hey, uh, you know, if you if you identify as this gender, you could take testosterone all you want. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Or you could take this whatever. All you, it's like I'd be like, few, I'd be furious. Yeah. Like, what do you what do you guys? talking about like so what's going on so yeah so i was right so it was chloe johnson sued for 2.5 million for not letting uh, her did compete she, as a female did she win i don't know does it say yeah i the, don't know the how do you I, maybe that was part of the i don't know like part of the deal was, here, here's my here's oh, she's from you bro she's from santa cruz yeah yeah, yeah I remember Here, that. here's my opinion on this okay it's a private organization they should have the right to tell you no you can't compete for whatever reason they want even if it's a discriminatory asshole reason. It's just like it's a private organization, okay? So mm-hmm. that's the thing. So her suing them, that's stupid to me, in my mm-hmm. opinion. That's that's silly. Just go compete somewhere else or or complain publicly, make a big deal about it, whatever. Obviously, the pressure work now, right. you know, CrossFit now is, is doing this. Do you? Here's the real question. Do you guys think this is going to hurt or help the CrossFit brand, what they're, what they're doing right now? I think now? it's going to hurt. Hmm. I think it's going to hurt. Yeah. yeah. I, I, think, I think it's going to cause more controversy – Within it, and I think that that I think it's politicized it, it for sure. Yeah, uh, you know, and I, I never think that that's a good idea. I in think sports. I think what's going to really hurt it, what, what can hurt it, is if the women start to speak out. Like, and I th- and you know they're afraid to speak out because I've talked to women on the side who I've, I haven't met a single woman who said that's totally fair. Everyone I've talked to who competes has said, "Yeah, it's not fair. I don't really like it." But they're afraid to speak out, and I'm, I'm. I think it's because of the backlash, the potential backlash that they could get. You know, so yeah. I don't know, man. We'll we'll see. I, I I'm I'm with you though, Adam. I think it's probably gonna. I think what'll happen is you may get some transgender female competitors who just start fucking killing everybody and and com, you know compete at the highest level, mm. and you're gonna see other women who sh- would have won now. Second, third, and fourth. Uh, you gotta and then th- that's when you're going to start to see maybe the back. You got to think as Glassman, you got to be hoping that this does that doesn't happen, right? If you're him, you're hoping that uh, there's a handful that want to. Uh, this is the right thing for me to do is to open it up this way, mm-hmm. uh, but maybe not thinking like, okay, well, how many how many of these people are crazy enough that they would change their sex just to have an just advantage? There's I, people I, that are like that out well, there. I, I mean, if, if people, if there, we, I mean, we talk about this on the show multiple well, times. Well, that's that's about, a very valid thing. I know people might get offended, but that's quite yeah. valid. People no, of course, do all it, kinds of if things. If people said that they would die five years win. after they win a gold medal, like if right. people have come out openly and said, "Listen, I would have died. I would have died. I would have by taken any means any, necessary. By any means necessary, it meant that much to me." Yeah, and if. You don't, you know, what I'm saying like if you don't fully identify with your sex currently already. Like, why not? They've caught people in the Olympics, I believe. Yeah, before. So yeah, they it's, have. It's happened. Yeah, we'll see what happens. I think this, this is a turning point for them. They've done two big things in in one week. One is their their drug testing. The other one is this one. We could 
potentially see CrossFit start to start to hurt, you know, hurt their ratings and stuff because of this. But we'll see what happens. We'll see if anybody hmm. really speaks out or gets pissed off or what ends up happening. But you know, you know, what? you know our opinion. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. I, it's going to be interesting to see see what happens. I do. You guys listen. To, you listen to that whole the whole Emily episode yeah. on, on Barbie. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I don't agree. Yeah, no. no. <laughs> I, I don't. No, I, th- I think she's... I, I know don't. a lot of people sided with her afterwards, though. A lot yeah. of people did. A lot of people took her side and... Well, you know, four years, I mean, that's that's tough. I mean, that's her I don't think I don't think, I don't think she should be banned for four years. Yeah, that, that. that was a bit extreme. Yeah, that's pretty hardcore. No, yeah. I agree, especially with them when you turn around and come out with news like this. Yeah. I, I definitely agree with you. Honestly, why don't they just... I mean, if I wasn't... I mean, just don't test, you know? Just yeah. don't test. Come compete, don't test, and... But then you go the way of bodybuilding, where bodybuilding just got so silly that nobody even wants. Well, to do I feel like just like bodybuilding, there's mm-hmm. a there's a market for both for both categories, mm-hmm. a tested and non tested category. Do you want to do you want to be a part of the group that says fucking let's do it, let's take whatever, do whatever, and I, people will definitely want to watch that group. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then are you a part of the group that hey, I still want to say I'm the fittest all natural person yeah. in the world? Like, why mm-hmm. not? Why mm-hmm. not have why not have both categories? I mean, the sport's growing fa- fast enough, big enough that you got to have be able to have yeah. like a, a little division of of each, right? Yep, yep, no, yep. is that not? I, well, you know, it's funny to me because well, the way we view anabolic steroids and performance enhancing drugs, like wh- why do we view them the way we do? Like, oh, they hurt your body. Um, athletes do a lot of shit that hurts their body. <laughs> sumo wrestlers, true. you know, when sumo wrestlers people turn, in general do a lot that well, hurts their body. Well, let's period. talk about athletes though. You know, sumo wrestlers when they turn forty have a big ass party because so many of them don't make it that long. Oh my god! No. Right? But look what they do to their body. Look at you know football players and the danger yeah, that they have. That. Look at boxers. Pounds. Look at fighters. Like look at what they do to their bodies anyway. Why do we like really because they're taking anabolics? We're gonna. You know, no, it's because they, there's still this thought that they're they're they have something over the the next competitor. Not if cheat. everybody can use well, it. Well, no, exactly. You know, let but that, that's use the it. thing. If you opened it up, it would be like equal playing ground. Maybe because people are afraid it's going to influence the kids. That's to, what I think. That's a big that's a big factor. Yeah, I get that, but, but that's already happening. Exactly, dude. Yeah. kids and I were when I was a kid, which I know it's got to be just like everything else accelerated. When I was a kid, there was kids on the football team that were taking steroids. Yeah. I know. I found that out later. It was crazy. Yeah, yeah, there was a bunch of kids like that. Yeah, I don't think I don't think I think it's better if we just promote the this idea that people own their body. This is what I tell my kids. Look, everybody owns their own body. If they're not hurting anybody, then I don't think they should get in trouble by the law. That doesn't mean they won't have consequences for what they're doing. Right. Because the things you do always have a, a, an effect. Mm-hmm. And if you hurt yourself, you're the one that has to pay the consequence. But I think that's what you tell your kids. Like, oh yeah, these are professional athletes and they're definitely sacrificing. It. First of all, they're sacrificing their bodies anyway, mm-hmm. whether they take steroids or not. Like, What would you tell your kid who wants to be a pro football player? Don't take steroids, but go ahead and go play football. It's totally safe. I tell them, look, <laughs> here's a deal. You're definitely sacrificing your 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 body and your brain by doing this. It's your body. It's your choice. But know that there's some consequences. I think you teach your kids that anyway, no yeah. matter what, right? Yeah. So if, so at that level, at that pro level, I think they should just not test anymore. Here you go. Trust me. There's a there's there's a limiter. There's a rev limiter there. They'll push it and then they'll start dying and then they'll bring it back. No, it's true. That's yeah. exactly what'll happen. You know, that's why I say you let it all. You it'll let get it get crazy and then yeah, it'll regulate it. So what happened with bodybuilding? Pro bodybuilding got crazy in the '90s. Guys were using crazy diuretics and you know growth and hormone. Look, and look levels. what the market did. The market opened up men's physique because of that. Yeah, because yeah. it got to a point where, and I remember being one of these kids. The reason why. I wasn't into bodybuilding that much. It's because I saw it right away. I'm like, that's I can't obtain that, nor do I want to take the amount of anabolics to even try to obtain that. No thanks. Mm-hmm. And there, I know I'm not alone with that. And so what ends up happening in a category like men's physique opens up. And so I think you see the same thing too. People yeah. will be like, this is like getting freakishly gross. Yeah. I'm not. I'm not into it. It doesn't. I can't relate to it because I don't want to take all those mm-hmm. steroids to do that. Yeah. I'm more interested. And they're in not going to. And they're not going to try and get. And they're, I don't think they'll ever do what bodybuilders do because bodybuilders are, are completely. Uh, you know what they're focused on entirely is, is how big and how ripped they can get. Massive they can get. Right. You have to, to perform still. You, yeah, there's a limit there. There's still a limit. Like, right. Like you know, like like okay. So here's a good comp- a good uh, um, comparison. Pride Fighting Championships was a mixed martial arts organization in Japan that was notorious for not drug testing. Uh, and then awesome. you had and then you had UFC who did drug testing. 
Now, did the Pride Fighters look different than the UFC guys? Yeah, they were all much bigger and muscular. They did get their asses kicked but, by all the UFC guys. Yeah, but and over. they didn't look like bodybuilders. Yeah. Like, cause you still have that limit that you have to perform. So I don't think CrossFit athletes will look. Well, that that's a good example too, because a lot of those guys came over to UFC and they still did, got their ass kicked. Yeah, they get their ass kicked yeah. just because you were all juiced up and everything that that put you up two weight classes. That's right. And yeah. a guy who's naturally that size ended up whooping whooping yeah. a lot of asses. Yeah. So yeah. And there was it, exceptions to the rule and yeah. stuff like that. But I mean, for the most part, and is it? It's, see, I'm not familiar. It's cross CrossFit has weight classes, right? Or no? Uh, no, I don't think so. It's just open. Yeah, it's men's m- open. It's women's. age. Oh, it's age wise. Yeah, they oh, do. Okay. They, ha- they have age. They have age. Yeah. Men and women, and then age. Yeah, but there's so many. There's a lot of comp- There's a lot of things in CrossFit that include body weight. It wouldn't make sense to go on a shit ton of gear and just get heavy anyway. No, no, you're exactly. You know what what I mean? Yeah, yeah. No, you couldn't. You wouldn't want to take a lot. I mean, you want to take enough to speed up your recovery and yeah, aid, recovery. aid aid in some strength, but. You wouldn't want to take something that's going like D ball. You know, we want something to take something that's going to hold a bunch of water weight and get you. Your performance all, will decrease. Yeah, and right. and inflammation would be up, and then your mobility would yeah. decrease. Like, yeah, no, you wouldn't want to take anything yeah. anything crazy. Yeah, like I just that. want to be clear, you know, too, because I know it's a, it's a touchy subject, which I find interesting. I, I don't I don't know why it's touchy. It's pretty objective if you're if you step outside of the political sphere and just look at things like a rational human being. It's it's not, but yeah. I but I do want to be very clear here. I 100% think people need to be treated all indi- all individuals oh, with respect. Yeah, yeah, with respect and people own their bodies. You want to do whatever you want to do to yourself, you should be allowed to and I'm not going to judge you. That's the that's what you were born in. It's your meat wagon, right? You get to do whatever you want to. It's like it was your car. Yeah. But at the and and I think private organization have a right. This is CrossFit's right. Go for it. But again, I, my opinion is based on what I think objectively mm-hmm. and I, I think the market We'll see what the market says. We'll see if, if people how how it responds and, and what this does for the brand of CrossFit. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I we'll agree. See. Hey, have you Justin? Have you watched the Last Chance You yet, or what? I have watched it. Did you get uh, caught up more? Or did no, you? I just uh, two episodes in. Damn, bro! Come on, <laughs> I want to talk to you about it's it. Fire, dude. Hurry the fuck up and I'm get sorry. through it. They did a thing at the end of it. That went back and revisited the first two seasons. Oh, they did. And where all the kids are at now. And there's yes. some crazy stories that I want to talk to you about. Oh, so I wish you'd hurry up and fucking okay, watch okay, it. Okay, I'm going to get on that. That's excellent. Excellent. Uh, Adam, have you still, are you still taking a lot of protein powder or are you doing more food again? Um, right, so I've been good. Like today, I'm, if I'm prepped, like a day that I'm prepped, I don't take it. Like so the goal, and the goal always is not to. Like I mean, even though we're sponsored by a company like Organifi and, and it's, it's our job to talk about using their supplements, I'm I'm very transparent with people about the goal is always for me to get whole natural foods. Sure. But I absolutely if I'm low, like I used it yesterday, but I didn't use it the day before, you know, or the how day much before. do you normally miss by and then how much do you have to supplement? Um, well, I mean, so and I, I will only do it if I feel like I'm like below one. So I'm uh, right now I'm 175 pounds of lean body mass. Okay. Now my goal is to get one, like one to one body weight in protein, which is, you know, I'm 215. So somewhere between 200 and 215 is kind of where my goal is. If I'm sub 170 in, in protein from whole foods, oh, so that's the minimum. That's just me. That's that, that's to the number that I've chose like, mm-hmm. or lower. So if I'm 170 or if I'm lower than 170, I'll take a shake. Mm-hmm. That's just uh, for sure. I'll take a shake to push me at 190 or so. And then I'll just, whatever. I'm not mm-hmm. worried that I'm a little bit under 200. It's not a big deal. And so that tends to happen. You know, and ha- like today, the plan is it for not to happen. But I also I'm behind already today, so I didn't. I, I a normal breakfast, staple breakfast for me is my bacon and eggs and sourdough toast, mm. and I didn't get it today. So I will. I and that's just how I, my brain works. I know I'm going to be playing catch up all day. Again, the strategy still will be to not use a shake if I don't mm. need to use one of the Organifi shakes. But I will if I at the end of the night. That's it's that's normally where I drink it. Do you feel a difference? So I know you you've done whey protein like consistently forever but then you've been using the organifi protein plant-based protein like as, as far as like on your gut and, i like, do how you feel i do you know what like so i i do go back and forth still because i and you know i still don't think there's anything that tastes as good as whey so there's certain shakes like that i like so when i have like a savory one so i i make like a peanut butter and banana one i make like this nutella coffee one so when i do like those kind of like savory or sweet flavored uh, shakes i like the whey protein. But if I'm just like, I just need the, the protein, I just need the 20 something grams of protein to push me up and I'm just mixing with water or almond milk and that's all. And I'm shaking it up almost always Organifi because I can tell the Organifi just sits well in me. Does yeah. it really? Oh yeah, yeah. No, it just, it just sits better. And I don't have any, I'm not like you. I don't have, I'm not sensitive where it like bothers me, 
but I just feel you better after. Tell. Yeah, yeah. I just it, it feels like it, my I feel my body feels like it digests it easier. It's super yeah. easy to digest because yeah. over the weekend when I was doing that workout, one of the shakes that I did was the Organifi protein, and I put three egg yolks in it for the cholesterol and just mix it up. Oh, and, yeah. oh you put I've the been actual- doing egg yolks myself actually, like and it has made a difference in, in my strength. Days. Right. So how many are you? What are you doing? I'll do like four egg yolks uh, in the morning, and then I'll work out in the middle of the day. And it's been fantastic. It's fucking crazy, right? Yeah. But it's a short- That on top of all the steaks. Yeah, you bump up your dietary cholesterol, but I was doing that over the weekend to try and recover, so I just throw the egg yolks in the- in How's the, it taste in the shake like that? Fine. It's really? fine. Yeah, you don't taste the egg, really. Do you do it uh, raw? So you, Yep. Okay. Yep. I don't recommend anybody doing it raw because of always, there's always that risk of salmonella, although the risk is actually quite small. Hmm. Um, but uh, but yeah, I, just, I, I separate the white out because the egg whites uh, will bother me a little bit if I have them, especially raw. Um, I don't know if you guys knew this, but whites have antibodies in them because they're mm-hmm. designed to protect the yolk. And some people will get it, a lot of people get a reaction. So people who have food intolerance issues will typically egg whites is one of the, the top five. Right. Egg yolks is usually not up there. So people with food intolerance Which is issues, actually the opposite of what most people think. Yeah. So people, a lot of people who have issues with eggs. Try eating just the yolk and see if it still have a, an issue. You, you may find that your the yolk is no problem whatsoever. It's just the white. They have an issue with, but yep. do you like the? Like, I used to like to put this was back when I was using the egg whites all the time like that. I used to put egg whites in my protein shake to boost the protein up. Mm-hmm. I, I actually used to like the way it tasted. It gave it gave it kind of this frothier taste to the. It shake. It does that a little bit, um, but it doesn't really taste. You can't really taste it. You just taste mainly the shake. Especially if you use something like almond or coconut milk, which is what I'll do, mm-hmm. then you really can't tell. So I'm actually going to steal that from you because that's the one thing I. What really sucks is if I'm if I'm like at 130 or 120 grams of protein, and like even the Organifi shake is only what 25 or 28. Yeah. Gram, it's it's less than 30. Mm-hmm. So that's an easy way to bump up the protein too in it. Yep, yep. I'll try that out. Do it. This quaz brought to you by Organifi. For those days you fall short on getting your organic veggies or whole food nutrition, Organifi fills the gap with laboratory tested certified organic superfoods to help give your health and performance the added edge. Try Organifi totally risk free for 60 days by going to Organifi.com. That's O-R-G-A-N-I-F-I.com and use the coupon code MINDPUMP for 20% off at checkout. First question is from Tony Lowe, yo, yo, yo. (laughs) Yeah. What's a good approach for fat loss after a reverse diet? So reverse diet is when you slowly, this is just in a nutshell, when you slowly increase your calories after, typically after a cut or a contest to get your metabolism to boost up um, so that you're not sitting at you know super low calories all the time. Because your me- metabolism adjusts and adapts to your food intake, but it also adapts to your activity level. So the goal with the reverse diet is get a faster metabolism. Here's the wonderful thing. If you do a good reverse diet and get your calories up high, when you cut your calories, you'll get a nice, fast, effective yeah. fat loss. And one thing that really impressed me about this approach was, uh, Adam, when you were doing, um, what's her name's? Uh, uh, oh, Melissa. Melissa's, yeah. When you did her first comp prep, you started her way out, but you you didn't even cut her. You said, we're going to get your calories way the hell up, so when we cut you, mm-hmm. what did you- like, I pushed her all the way up to 2,600 calories. And then she's a she's a small girl. Yeah, yeah. She's only, she's, she hit stage at 112. So she's tiny. She has a 112-pound competitor eating 2,600 calories. And that's what you worked her up to slowly before you started the Right, cut. right. So she's, a, she's a two weeks out from her, her next show right now, and- She'll occasionally like check in and, and tell me where she's at, like just to hey, what do you think? This is where I'm at. And the last time she checked in with me, she was at 1,800 calories. Two weeks out. Yeah. No, I bet you no woman, no female competitor in her, her no, class is doing. No, that. especially her size. Yeah. No. Especially her size. They're like I'm a thousand. Oh yeah, I've, I've had other competitors that I've trained and clients that I know that are in 150, 160 range that aren't even eating that many calories. I mean, I I bring up Jessica on this show all the time, the other girl that has competed before that I'm always trying to help and. She's the opposite. She's always wanting to hurry up and start cutting, and I'm constantly telling her, like, you just haven't done the due diligence of ramping your metabolism up. You, She's only at 1,800 calories, and she's 170 pounds, mm. and she wants to start cutting right now, and I'm like, man, you were, no, you're nowhere near. You start right now. Where are we going to be in, like, four weeks? You'll be nowhere near the weight you really want to be, and you'll be starving already. Like, it's just not going to happen. So, yeah, she cruises right in. Because of that, I shouldn't say cruise. Because if you talk to her, she'd be like, she feels like she's starving. That's why it's so. It's all relative, right? It's really funny. Like, 
Yeah, it's, well, because your metabolism's high, you're yes, going to be hungrier. Right. So that what people don't understand because they hear that and they're like, "Oh, they're so jealous." Like, "Oh, I wish I could be." The funny part is, it's just as hard for her as it is for the other person who's mm-hmm. starving themselves. Just healthier for her. Mm-hmm. She's her body will respond better. Her skin will look better. Her hair will look better. Her face looks better. Like she has more muscle. Yeah, she muscle. Can, holds on to more muscle. Like she's taking care of her body and her metabolism. And that's where the sport is okay, in my opinion. Like when you do it correctly. You really, you really don't. It's really not that dangerous or stressful on the body. I mean, you can't. T- nobody in here right now can tell me that if she's two weeks out from a show and she's eating eighteen hundred count. Mind you, too, she does fifteen minutes a hit post workout. That's what she does, and then she walks she, and she's ramped up now to 20,000 20, steps. So I've taught her to once prep starts. She starts at ten thousand steps, then goes to twelve, then to fourteen, then to sixteen, then to eighteen, then to twenty thousand steps. And so she's walking at 20,000 steps. She's doing hit hit cardio after her post workout right now. That's that's the most we're doing right now. There's no hour bout of sitting on the treadmill or blasting on the treadmill to burn. What her. a contrast from her and her peers. Cuz literally somebody in her category, right? She's 112 pounds or 110 pounds or whatever. Someone in her category is walking into the contest, you know, a week before or whatever or, or walking in the contest eating under 1,100 calories, that's the average that I see consistently, doing two hours of cardio or more a day and weights. That's what they're going into the contest with. Right. She's eating 1,800 calories and she's doing 15 minutes a hit and just being active all day. Right. You know? Like, which situation do you think is going to... And not only that, but you're probably going to look better as a result. And now she's kicking ass. Right. That's part of the reason. She doesn't look like she's dead yeah. right. when she's on stage. And here's the other thing. When you do it the wrong way... Bye bye hormones. Your yeah. hormones are fucked. Yeah. You have a tough time recovering from something like and that. And so what we do, so the goal in the reverse diet for me and whenever I teach it to anybody is I want to I want to push your keep slowly creeping your calories up until you look back at me and go like, "Adam, this is it's a lot of food I got to eat." Or it's just like it's it's becoming inconvenient to eat enough to hit your target, which is a, such a natural place to transition the other direction. It's and that's kind of like the You're very ready. yeah the very first time that I did this with Melissa the her very first show, you know I would I kept and she kept asking me like how high are we gonna go how, I'm like let's just keep going like are you having okay eating she's like yeah no I'm enjoying this I'm 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 fine I'm like okay well you know I want you to tell me when it gets to a point where you're just like this is too much and that's where it was when we got about 2,600 calories she's just like it's hard Adam for me to make sure I get enough of these calories it gets a lot I'm like okay perfect now let's go the other way. And it was, I just took her down a few hundred. So I went from like 26 and told her to hover around 23 to 24. And then her body already started and to- fat just started coming Yeah, out. just started. She started to lean out nice and slow and controlled. Then we dropped another two to 300 calories. And then lean. And the way I would do it is every time I would want to just drop it and then stay there as long as we could until we start stop seeing results. And I could see, because back, I mean, I have her checking in with me on a regular basis back then. And I could see like, okay- Progress is starting to stall a little or slow up. Like, let's drop down a little bit. And then once I start getting to like the 2000 calorie range, where I like, I'd like, I think is a healthy place for her body, her size to be at, then I go, okay, let's, let's keep your calories now the same. Now let's start adding the hit cardio. Okay, let's add a hit, let's add hit in there three days out of the week. And then, mind you, too, I, I oh, you know, grazed over real quick was the, this, the adding the steps. So every week in the cut, we're, ramping up about 2000 steps mm. every week which is is not a lot you know 2000 mm. more steps is a half hour stroll you know mm. that you you walk for the day or you're just aware of it or you may actually naturally get it just throughout your day so every week she's also adding 2000 steps so i know she's burning a little bit more i'm reducing by 2 to 300 calories every week and we keep doing that until we hit about 2000 calories then at 2000 calories i'm like okay this is a place where you know, you're eating a balanced four meals or so a day. You're getting your body adequate protein to hang on to the muscle mass that we're at. Okay, now let's stretch it and push it a little bit. Let's start to add some hit. And again, hit's already been proven to show it's one of the better places to do cardio when you want fat loss and hanging on to as much muscle as possible. It's the long bouts of cardio that send that signal to the body to adapt and to get rid of muscle, mm-hmm. that it's not advantageous for a, per, a long distance runner to have, which the, a lot of competitors and bodybuilders don't realize this. I think it's so funny that they go right to this, these cardio bouts. It's like you're sending your, your body a mixed signal by 
building and lifting and trying to be strong and massive and huge and lots of muscle and then getting on a treadmill and running. It's a conflicting message. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And so to think that your body's not going to stall out, I think is really silly. That's the last place I want to go. You know, that's the last thing. Because I know that inevitably if we start running for an hour or pushing the body for an hour cardio wise, it's inevitable and more than likely we're going to lose a little bit of muscle. Yeah, we might lose fat and we might lean out and drop some weight on the scale. So, so yeah. here's and here's the thing too. Pro bodybuilders, they love doing cardio that way. They'll get on a treadmill and walk for like an hour. But you're also talking about a 280 pound person who 15 minutes a hit would probably give him a heart attack and and they're on so many anabolics that it overrides the signal to to lose muscle you know what i mean so they're kind of burn just ex- burning extra calories right right you know i you know I, I wonder if you could you could technically use this strategy of reverse diet cut reverse diet cut and get yourself to a point where you're shredded if you oh, if you do this cycle over and over again and, and you're smart about it I bet you could use this cycle and get yourself to a point where you're shredded with a very fast metabolism. You hear what I'm saying? Oh, 100%. So like so like let's say you're let's say you're like Melissa, right? Like she's she's at 2600 calories. She gets she slowly gets herself to let's say 2000 calories cuz she's not forget the competing part. Gets super lean at 2000 calories. Now she slowly reverse diets. You know, she'll gain a little bit of body fat, but once the you know maybe a couple pounds and she gets her calories up, and then she starts to reverse again. You could, or, or starts to cut again. Theoretically, you could, if you do this over a long period of time, of this kind of staggered approach, get to the point where you're lean and you're st- st- eating well. That's you know, a high amount of calories. That's where I mean, part of why I think she's having a lot of success. You know, she's heading into worlds, right? So she's going after the WBFF, you know, world's championship right now, and I think she's going to do great. I think she's going to for sure. I believe she'll place top five. I think. I don't know what the politics are like in that in that federation or not, but I think she could win. I, I see the two other girls that won it last year, and I think she's got a better physique, and I think she's coming in better. But she's done this now enough times that I, I mean, and I, and I don't, you know, per, for personal reasons, I don't like the way her or those physiques look like when they're where they're at now. Like it's just it, to me, it's not. It's too emaciated and shredded Again, looking. Shredded, yeah. yeah, I think she looks great now like when she's off, like mm-hmm. when she's not like dieting sure. hard or with that because she comfortably can be around that 22 to 2400 calories and training like consistently mm-hmm. and not having to do a crazy amount of calories as long as she's focused on her movement and keeping an incredibly lean lean body. She never goes way well, here's never a, blows up well, like a lot of competitors do after a show. Well, here's the deal, like look at you. You used to walk in cuz you did this, you compete how many times you compete? 6. 6 times. You typically what happens with people when they compete a lot is you'll it'll get harder and harder for them. They start to say their body stops respond. You on the other hand, you were walking into competitions eating a shit ton of food because you you'd reversed it and come down so yeah. so effectively that you know what were you eating walking into competition? Oh God, dude! So the lowest I ever got was twenty two hundred calories. Was the lowest I ever let myself get down to, and that was what show was that? I believe that was USA's. And part of that was actually because I had built up enough muscle that my critiques were not you weren't muscular. You were you were, you were trying to get diced. Yeah, and so. and this smaller. They were just like you know you're big. You you're flirting between that men's physique classic look. And everyone told me at the national and amateur level that I was kind of too big. I had already a pro physique when I was so I went in. I cut that hard, knowing that I would probably lose some muscle because. I hit I hit stage at 201 as a at at nationals and that was the lowest calorie intake I ever did at 22 but when I went pro I was hitting stage at 215 mm-hmm. and when I was hitting stage at two, I was calories were like 3000 that was your pre contest yeah bro I would <laughs> diet like low like a, like a low day cuz sometimes I'd run like two or three low low day would be like 27 2800 calories that's hilarious yeah no what a contrast oh totally and yeah. and then to see where I'm at now like because of the falling off and then remember I told you when I wasn't moving like because of the Achilles I wasn't doing more than 2000 steps a day I wasn't lifting that much so I was losing muscle mass so I was down to eating one to two meals so I'm still in this process of like right now, so you're reversing right now. Yeah, I'm. Re- I'm like, and that's been like, you know. Of course, we fell right in the middle of this challenge, so I'm like, kind of, you know, flirting with both sides here. But I, I, I always got to keep letting myself. Like I just said earlier when we first started this podcast, 
I got I can't let the psychological part fuck with me and do what I know is not right for my body, mm-hmm. which would be, you know, I know if I were to all of a sudden drop to 1800 calories, of course, I would start to lean out really fast, but that's not a healthy place to be. It's not a place I want to be either. End up with that right. I'm, and so I'm hovering around 3000 calories or so right now, which is cool. Like I'm okay, but it's not, I'm not like before that would be leaning out. I mean, at 3000 calories, I would be watching myself lean out almost every single day consistently at that calorie intake where now it's not, it's kind of sustained. I'm actually building right now on that. So you can tell that my metabolism is still nowhere near. No, it's funny. Once you understand how the metabolism adapts, you can use it to your advantage, whether you want to gain or lose weight. You know what I mean? Oh, absolutely. And I think in the context of modern life, most people will benefit from having a faster metabolism. You just there's food accessible everywhere. We're too sedentary. Well there's two You're camps. Better off with there's the two metabolism. camps right now, right? And I think I brought this up before and I and I might have threw somebody on the bus that actually really hadn't came out so that's why I apologize when I talked about this before where there but I know there's two camps of like people that are out there that are talking about that, you know, it's it's more ideal to learn to eat as little as possible to mm-hmm. to live off of that versus to be over consuming and inflaming the body sure. all the time. And I get that. Like I can I can subscribe to that. I can make sense to me that Of course. That, you know, the, the I mean the, the digestive system is just like every other system on the body. Any other system on the body can be overworked. Well would you want a fast, super fast metabolism if you're a, a caveman? Right. <laughs> no. Yeah, of course not. You want a nice thrifty one that's gonna keep right. Your, yeah. Right. So. But I think you bring up the point that I think is so great, which is the important one is we live in a different time now. You know, totally. and so fast metabolism is great insurance yeah. for modern life. It's yeah. a great insurance. I mean, if you're somebody who has the ability to eat fifteen hundred calories and you never want an ice cream cone or you never want to have some frappuccino from whatever, like whatever. You know what I'm saying? You don't have pizza. What you don't no, have to con- the context has totally changed. Modern life is sedentary as hell, period. End of story. Naturally. If you want to be active, you have to go out of your way to be active. And your food is very palatable and it's accessible. All food is accessible. I could go to the grocery store and I can get I can get fruits and vegetables twenty all year long. Does it make any sense, right? Well, we've created the system now where we have all this food. Fast metabolism will protect you a little bit. Next question is from J. Johnson 35. How do you create a better relationship with food and stop binging or constantly thinking about food? Mm. Well, who picked these questions today? It's like nutrition hour. (laughs) Nutrition, nutrition. (laughs) Just as boring. My favorite fucking subject. (laughs) The you guys are fired. <laughs> you know, here's the thing with uh, with food relationships. This is a difficult one to tackle because your relationship with food is was started to get molded uh, from you know day one from being born, and we we're we're constantly fed all the time. We never go without food. I mean, I, I'm pretty sure most people listening right now have never in their entire lives, except for maybe when they were very ill have gone without food for a full day, right? Everybody eats every single day. And so here's the thing. The way we judge what we eat uh, is based on a couple things. Uh, are the taste, how good it tastes, and the emotional connection we have to food. And that's pretty much it. We haven't really connected anything else to food, and we haven't connected with the natural signal of hunger. You know, we think when we think we're hungry, what we're really having is a craving. Hunger doesn't really kick in until probably 48 to 72 hours of, of not being in food, or if you're in a really, really low calorie deficit, you may start to feel some hunger. But usually it's cravings, and you know, I'm, I'm really hungry right now, doesn't really mean you're hungry. So mm. your connection's all over the place now. So, you know, we, we've done such a good job of providing so much free content that sometimes I think we suck at selling our own shit. Like, yeah. We wrote a guide for this. Yeah, yeah. the intuitive guide talks yeah, we, about this very We well. literally wrote a guide ex- exactly for this because we knew that this is not easy. Right. Not be, and it's not something that as simple as like a couple of pieces of advice that one of, uh, all three of us could give real quick over a podcast. It is. It, it's going to take time, and there are some steps, and we lay all those out in the intuitive eating guide. And I, I think you just got to know that it's going to take some time. That or or entrust your par- your partner to put a shock collar on you. And every time you're about to go do something like that, they give them the free. As long as you have a safe word. <laughs> yeah, 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 sure. Yeah, right. You get crazy yeah, with that. Yeah. So fasting is a great way to understand hunger and separate your emotions from food. So what I mean by that is, if you do a 48 or 72 hour fast or longer, which you know, make sure you're healthy and get get clearance to do first. But if you do do that, here's what'll end up happening: in that three days that you don't eat, you're gonna live your normal life. You're gonna have some stress. You're gonna have some anxiety. 
You're going to feel happy or sad, but you're not going to have food. You're not going to have food there. So it's, you, it literally is one of the best ways to break yourself from the chains of, you know, food as far as being like, I have, this is a ritual. This is something I, like, you just fall into like hanging out with people and eating. A lot of times it's like mindless and, and to be able to, um, you know, go through that process and understand that like, oh, wow, I really don't need as much food to fuel me to do activities, to do whatever it is. Like, it's not necessarily that important. Like you can live, you know, pretty much with, with without like an excess of food. I would, it could, it, it's literally the exact same thing that somebody who's trying to get off of drugs goes through. The exact same thing. And this question is exactly, and the answer, there's not a, there's not a specific or the one way to do this right. because there's two camps in, yeah, even, that could be one. There's like, two camps in the drug strategy. world. There's two camps in the drug world, right? If someone's addicted to drugs, uh, some people have a lot of success by cutting cold turkey, ripping it all from you, locking you up in a room for 30 days, and then flushing sweating it out, sweating yeah. it out, being miserable, whatever, and then from there, staying disciplined not to go back, right? And then there's other people, and I tend to kind of side more with this camp, which is kind of like that reminds me of uh, what doctor was it that we had on the show way back when who has oh, the forgot. Peak okay. Brain Institute yeah, yeah, and all yeah. that. What's his name? I can't think his name right Dr. now. Dr. Andrew, Andrew Hill. Hill. Dr. Andrew Hill. Thank you. So where they actually don't do that, they actually try and, you know, connect those cravings to like the other behavioral addictions that you've created in your life. And it's a slow winging you off. At the end of the day, you have to you, you first have to accept that your body has become addicted to a lot of these things, both physically and then behaviorally. You have to understand that, that it's like that and be, and just, and some people I know are probably, oh God, they don't want to hear that because it sounds like I'm demonizing food and separating good. And, but hey, at the end of the fucking day, whether you could label it good or bad, there is food that is more optimal for you. And then there is food that is not so optimal yeah. for you. Bottom fucking line. And you, and you, and we all struggle with this, especially if we were raised in families that gave us processed fucking cereals and you could eat candy bars and you could have ice cream every night. Like, I feel you. I know what that's mm -hmm. like. And here I am, 36, going on 37, barely breaking through these change. This, this would never happen. Right here to my right is a box of Mike and Ike candy, which is one of my favorite candies that Jackie brought me. Now, I think it's been a month and a half, two months since she's been there. Never in my life would something have lasted that long? Maybe I would justify it for a week or two because I'm in a challenge or something like that, but never in my life. And that's just because I've broke those chains. I've broke that. Mm -hmm. I don't want it. I don't need it. I don't think about it all the time. It's not a big deal to me to, to let go of it because I've done such a good job of connecting all the dots to how I feel when I feed my body optimally. Well, that's an yeah. important, that's a very important point right there because like, like I was saying before, when we make judgments on food, it's based off of, taste and how it makes us feel in the terms of the emotion and context and with my friends, but we don't connect food to all these other factors, which if you become aware of them, if you become aware of how your food, and this is the other side of it. So you, you do a fast first, when you come out of the fast, start eating again, but now start journaling. How do you feel before the meal, during the meal and after the meal? And then how do you feel later in the day? And just journal. And what you'll start to notice is Foods, different Dear foods affect diary. you. Yeah, they affect you in different ways. Some, I they, got gas. They may affect your digestion. They may affect your mood. They may affect your skin. They may affect your sleep. But as you become aware of all these things that food affects, now your judgment, your natural subconscious judgment, will be based off of all of those things, not just the taste. And then what ends up happening is you'll sit down, because trust me, when I sit down in front of a piece of cake or a cupcake or candy or a pizza, for sure, I acknowledge that that's going to taste yeah. amazing. I, like it's not like I look well, at it and go, "Oh, it's not going to taste good." I acknowledge it's going to taste good, but I've also become so aware of the other ways it makes me feel that I weigh them out. And guess what happens a lot of times? Well, the well, I think too. Like when you mentioned before about cravings versus actually being hungry, I think that it is so important to understand the difference between the two, because a lot of times, like we're like even myself when i when i went through the process and i why we've even mentioned the fast why i think it's important you know it, it's because like you haven't actually like understood like okay th like this is actually a craving this is i'm not i'm not necessarily hungry right now mm -hmm. like i can i can go without that um there's this panic around it there's this panic that i have to shovel in food because i've i've been like a stretch of like 5 hours oh my god i need food and then you make bad decisions bro it's a state of unawareness you know i had a client once who she was trying to avoid sugar 
And we were having this conversation one day while I was training her and she's like, you know, we're talking and she's like, oh, because my, my studio used to be next to a grocery store. She's like, oh, I just bought dinner or whatever. And, I'm, and we were talking about what she picked for dinner. And she's like, oh, and I grabbed a few of the, you know, the, the chocolate peanuts out of the, out of the bin that's in the thing. And I looked at her, I'm like, how often do you, does that happen when you go grocery shopping? She's like, oh, it, I mean, I guess I do it every single time. And I'm like, that's weird that you don't count that in your actual food. And then she realized that she was literally unaware. Like she's literally making herself, consciously making herself unaware. Mm -hmm. Now, this is what happens when people binge. While people are binging, if they were to make a practice where they stop, you know, one fourth of the way through, stop, don't eat. What am I doing? Let me take some notes. Or Let at me the, write down. Or at the bare minimum, mm -hmm. write it down afterwards. That's right. And mm -hmm. look at it. And, and because yeah. that's why I'm such a it. that's why I'm yeah. so big on the tracking thing. It's like I'm not even telling you to break your habits yet. We're not even there yet. But fucking write it down because you don't even have to be a nutritionist no. to be able to look at one of those apps and go, holy shit, my pie chart's fucked up. Yep, yep. You know, Built way. in your own accountability that yep. way. Yes. Yep. That, that, uh, just like you said, because most people are just so unaware I, these are the these are the conversations i'd have with a client where they'd come in and be like hey I, oh yesterday i binged and i ate four cupcakes and i'd say okay well let's talk first off don't judge yourself because that only mm. judging and hating yourself will fuel the opposite of what you want so just observe okay you're just you're just being aware so okay i ate four cupcakes yesterday and so i'd say okay how long did it take you to eat those uh you know oh uh, i don't know 10 minutes 10 15 minutes okay what were you thinking after the first cupcake? After you ate the first cupcake, why did you go to the second one? And what were you thinking after the second cupcake? And what were you thinking after the third cupcake? And it, the same answer always comes out. Like they always say to me like, well, I, I wasn't, I just, just kept going. I wasn't thinking. Exactly. It was, li you were literally consciously making yourself unaware of what you're doing so that you can do what your cravings or whatever are telling you to do. So when you take and write things down and write down how you feel, at first it becomes painful because nobody wants, by the way, when I tell someone who binges, hey, during your binge, stop halfway through and write down what you're doing, nobody wants to do it. I don't, I don't, I don't want to do that. Why don't they want to do it? They don't want to face the reality yeah, yeah. of what they're doing. Nobody wants to stop halfway through hurting themselves and recognize that they're hurting themselves. This is the hard part. That's the hard part. The hard part is being brave enough to face your demon, and your demon is that you're binging. So you have to be brave enough to stop halfway through. Maybe you keep binging afterwards. That's fine. Just write it down. Write down what you're doing, how you're feeling. Oh, my God, I want to eat this food so bad. I feel panicked. I'm anxious. I've already eaten this many donuts. Now I want to eat this. If you want to keep eating afterwards, that's fine, but just become aware of it, but be brave enough to face it because the, the, what will stop you every single time from pro progressing is that willful uh, unawareness that we tend to do and that's why journaling and fasting are so effective the neat part is you do this long enough if you do this long enough it will get to a point and it's it's taken me a long fucking time to get here okay so it's not a short journey to get especially if you for a long time it's you work there. man it is it is absolute but it's now to this point and i and i still kind of test this because I'm, I'm fascinated by this change that i have felt in my body where you know i've told you guys before like for years I literally had like a pint of ice cream every single night before bed. If I had a pint of Ben and Jerry's right now, it would destroy me. And so now, even if I decide like, hey, you know what? I haven't had some Ben and Jerry's in a long time. I'm going to go ahead and let myself have some tonight. Like I'm going to sit down. Katrina and I are going to watch a movie and I'm going to enjoy an old thing. I, I totally think that's totally fine. But what I know will happen, and it's a, this has already happened because I've tested this multiple times, is I get through halfway and I'm like, ooh, I can feel it. I can feel right away because I've I've now been able to break those chains. I've disconnected from it for long enough, long enough of a time. I've fed myself really, really good foods. I actually now crave like vegetables and fruits, which I had no desire for in the past. In the past, vegetables couldn't taste more like cardboard to me, and fruit was bland and boring to me. Where now those things are very rich. And so if you're somebody who's still eats fruit and eats vegetables because you think you're supposed to eat it and not because your body craves it or wants it, that's because you still have not broken the chains completely mm -hmm. from all these other artificially hijacked, super, super palatable, sugary foods. Once you get rid of all that for long enough, 
all of a sudden you start noticing when you bite into a strawberry or an apple or a peach, it tastes that same reward that you got mm. from the candy and the ice cream and the things that you would normally, ch- chips or whatever you would binge on, you start to get from those foods and it's fucking awesome. I can't wait till Justin has vegetables again because that's he's going to experience, <laughs> unless you've already had, have you started having any? Not yet. See, I can't wait to see what you feel because you haven't had them for so long. Yeah. I bet they're going to taste... Like really amazing. Good. No, yeah. I'm looking. I'm really looking forward to it, man. Because like, it, it's funny. I like I told you my whole experience with Brussels sprouts. Like, I they came out of nowhere. I'm like, what is this? You know, <laughs> like that was a huge thing for me. It's just like you know, going through that process again with all the vegetables can be great. Yeah. Next question is from Nick Husky. Can you talk about oral health and its connection to overall health? So whole lot of oral yeah so so here's a here's a good way to put it and I've, I've put the i've put it this way for people and it's really resonated with them so the inside of your mouth and the inside of your gut so if you, if you look at your mouth if you there's a tube that connects your, your mouth to your anus right and it goes through your stomach and you have that small and large intestines and the inside of your mouth is part of that when things go in those areas they're not inside your body so it's important to understand that it's Literally like a donut. The middle of the donut, there's space in the donut. If I put a pencil in there, that pencil's not inside the donut. I have to actually poke in the donut to get the pencil inside there. So when things are in your right now, when (laughs) (laughs) when things are in your mouth or you swallow things, they don't go in your body until your body starts to break them down and Mm -hmm. absorb them. Right, right. That's why. That's the reason why you can eat a quarter and pass it. That's right. Yeah. So, and this this is true for your your mouth as well. Now, if you have bad oral health and your gums bleed, you are literally exposing your blood, your body to things on the outside that you probably shouldn't. It's really not that different from imagine having a scab Mm. on your arm that's kind of bloody, and then you chewing up food and then just rubbing it on that scab. What do you think is going to happen to that scab mm. uh, when you do that over over and over again? Everything you eat, just chew it and kind of mm. rub it in. Nice little chew bacteria it and rub it in. culture. That's right. Or and your body starts to develop antibodies. antibodies. Yeah, they're going to fight it. And you're going to have you can develop gut issues and autoimmune issues mm-hmm. as a result. They've connected poor oral health to poor health. Period. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. Mental health and poor poor gut health. And this is something that I didn't really understand now, for a long now time. Now, on that note, because I'm curious to what you think too, because I think that you can over-scrub, over-clean, because there's there's healthy bacteria that are in there too, because yeah. there's there's two kind of two camps in the- Oh, the whole Listerine every five seconds? Yeah, yeah, no, exactly, of always trying to trying to clean and flush and brush and get all, mm-hmm. all that stuff out of there, because there has got to be some benefit to the bacteria that's inside of your mouth also. No, I think the most effective thing you can do, the most important thing besides brushing your teeth is flossing. Mm-hmm. Have you guys have you oil pulled before? I have. I have too. Yeah. What did you think? I haven't. Uh, it's it's a pain in the ass. Uh, my buddy does it like all, every other day. It takes too much time. Yeah, that's what I mean. It's it's like a it's a whole process to do it, hmm. and it's really annoying to keep it in your mouth. Your mouth feels amazing though afterwards. I mean, it really does. It feels it feels great, and it does have this like you don't get like this listerine feeling after it, where it feels like you've just had chemicals in your mouth that have just totally bleached the inside of your mouth. <laughs> it has this feeling of. You know the the gum. You can feel this like coat, like this kind of slimy coat all over your mouth. Yeah. But it does. It feels it in a clean way. It's pretty wild. Yeah, I think with the, the I know there's lauric acid in coconut oil. That's that's good for it's antibacterial. But then also I think what happens with the fats that you're swirling around your mouth. It's supposed to be for like 30 minutes. Yeah, they start to break down uh, fat soluble type compounds that tend to be hard to remove. So it's uh, you know same way you extract you know THC from from cannabis. You have to use a fat because it's fat soluble. You can't just pull it off, right? Right. So I think that's that's part of what it does. I, you know what I do? So flossing is super important because that's where people will bleed in their gums is in mm-hmm. between. So, you know, they'll eat, they'll brush their teeth and they'll bleed. It's because the, in between their gum uh, and their teeth, their gums are inflamed because they haven't flossed them and they get so inflamed that they stick to the tooth. And once you kind of pull the gum away from the tooth up in the middle, that's where you start to bleed. So flossing is important. But I, I, do you guys use anything particular to brush your teeth or just toothpaste? Just my Tom's. Just regular? Mm-hmm. I, you ever sprinkle ba- baking soda on it? No, but you could I've brush your teeth. I've done the powder that you had that one time. Yeah, you could, yeah. you could brush your teeth with baking soda. Baking soda, I love the using baking. All, those they, shoes that you're looking at right there that are like three years old were cleaned by baking soda. Wait, wait, yeah. What? What do you do? Yeah, it's my brother-in-law who's, who's put me onto the game, dude. Look at those things. Those things are three years old. 
and they see how white the bottoms are. He cleaned them with baking soda. Just, just water, baking soda, uh, on water, baking soda on like a toothpa- toothpaste or a toothbrush or uh, or a rag. What well, always baffled me, like the irony of most uh, toothpaste have a ton of sugar in them. And it's like, <laughs> dude, we're going through and we're just adding sugar in between all the cracks of your teeth. And like, what the fuck? Like, just because we want it to taste good, you know? Like, it, it just seems so det- counterproductive. They also put detergent in them to make it foam. So people love foamy toothpaste because they think that makes it means, oh, it yeah. works better. No, the foam doesn't do shit for you. Just people like it. And they also will put some of them used to, I don't know if they do it anymore, but they used to put um, triclosan, hmm. which is an antibacterial. And so it'd be like, you know, and, you know, kills the bacteria in your mouth. And so you're putting antibiotics in your mouth while you're fresh. Dude, that's what I'm saying. That's what people, some people do that. That's got to be terrible for your mouth. Yeah, well, not just for your mouth, but, you know, if your gums do bleed, and now you're rubbing triclosan in there. <laughs> I, that can't be good it for you, right? can't be good. No, and if you uh, accidentally swallow it and all that stuff. No, I, um, yeah, I would go with a natural, uh, an all-natural toothpaste. Baking soda is good, although I've had dentist clients of mine in the past say it's a little abrasive yeah. for the teeth. But I don't know. Have you guys ever had cavity? I've never had a cavity. Have you guys? Mm-hmm. You yeah. neither? No. Oh, yeah, yeah. I've had cavities. You've had cavities? Yeah, a couple of times. I think that has a lot to do with the pH of the mouth. I will say this, though. There was a time, this and this... This is also why I think the the dentist game is such a hustle. When I was a kid, uh, my parents took me to the dentist, and I had seven cavities. And I didn't feel I didn't have I didn't have pain. I didn't complain or anything like that. They just it was like the you know semi. We didn't go annually. We couldn't mm. afford to go annually, but we we would go every few years when we could. My mom took us down there, and I, I think at this time I'm like twelve or thirteen. And they tell me I have seven cavities. I was like, "Oh my god!" Well, like, my family, damn. my family can't afford to do seven fillings, so well, we don't. We just didn't do anything about it, mm-hmm. you know. And I just continued brushing my teeth. And nothing. And then the next time, like which was a couple more years later, you didn't have any. I didn't have any. <laughs> and so I was like, "Oh, interesting. This is kind of interesting to me." So yeah, no, yeah, I've, I might have got hustled because, yeah. like, yeah, they they put on. You know, they did the, the fillers and everything else, you know, to make sure they drilled and fill it with like. So I've. Both my back teeth have like these fillings in them. Mm. So I did see a dentist later on when I was, this is when I'm older. This is in my mid twenties. One of the ladies that used to go to my boot camp was a dentist and she, she looked at my teeth one time and, uh, she, cause she was concerned. She said, she goes, you know, you drink, I was drinking, this was back when I was drinking those rock star oh, yeah. drinks all the time. That's mm. yeah, that's no good. And it, it was, it was starting to eat away at, at the, the top. Enamel? Yes. Mm. And when I stopped, it completely stopped. It was crazy what a difference like that healed made. itself. Yes. Yeah, you can actually Dude, heal. That's the thing. You can actually reverse cavities. It's funny, yes. yeah, because when I was getting my teeth done, like he was raving about how healthy my gums were and everything. And I, I was like, that every, like I've always gone to the dentist and they've talked shit about my teeth, you know? And I granted, you know, they didn't look that great, you know, because I've been grinding them for all of these years and everything. But like, like consistently would brush my, like I would never miss a brushing teeth session, you know? <laughs> and like, maybe I've had some shit in my diet that have contributed to, but not that crazy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Another thing too is grain heavy diets have been, uh, have been shown. And some, some people have shown that that will contribute to poor dental health. And they think it has to do with the phytic acid that's in grains and some seeds and in, in, in legumes that are mineral blockers. Uh, they, they, they tend to prevent the absorption of minerals um, by the way, this is one of the reasons why um, brown rice isn't consumed that often in a lot of these third world countries. They find if they eat a lot of brown rice, they start to get mineral deficiency. So they mm. remove the the husk or whatever, which has got the phytic acid. Why do we even have brown rice? I know. It's, well, brown rice is rice in its natural form. It's crazy. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it oh. blocks. Yeah. I did, I, I did not know that. Like White that. rice is more processed. Oh, that's yeah. interesting. But I, it's one of the things. Well, here's the thing with grains. Grains, you have to process... Some you have to do some processing to be able to consume them because grains to to it, yeah. in their natural forms you 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 can't eat wheat off the stalk. That, that's been a, that's been a, a lifelong right. myth for me was that that brown rice was superior to white no. rice and yeah. it's not no. true. No no no. I mean you know if you measure it yeah it's got more some more nutrients. I bet it's got you more. somebody is still preaching that in the fitness. There community. is people that yeah. do yeah. still. Yeah, yeah absolutely. No I've had, I've had people that have told me oh I do this and I have my brown rice and I'm like why no. do you have brown rice? No there's anti nutrients in in, mm-hmm. in that and if you consume lots of phytic acid for example. You can you can actually cause nutrient deficiency. So, for people who have teeth tooth issues, here's the thing: when people have bad, when they get lots of cavities, sometimes you can you can say, oh, it's your your you have bad you know uh, oral cleaning habits. 
sometimes people go in and they're like, man, I brush my teeth three times a day. I floss after every meal. I do everything right. Why am I getting all these calories? Look at your diet. Mm -hmm. Your diet is contributing to your poor oral health. And one of the things you can do is increase your fat intake, increase your fat-soluble vitamins, reduce your grains. Um, and if you can tolerate dairy, eat like raw dairy type foods so you have that calcium and then see what happens and you may actually start to reverse uh, all those problems. Next question is from Jamie Crisis. Do you feel it's necessary to follow a non-compete contract when you quit one place to train to go to another? Is there anybody that makes you sign a non-compete? I feel like didn't didn't we have that when we were 24? I'm not sure, but like well, I know that the it was there like the the fear. Well, you okay, so when companies like that, you can't moonlight. Like so if you work for a place like 24 Hour Fitness or a UFC gym or a Golds or a, any of these big chains, uh, most of them there are some. There's exceptions to the rule. I know some companies that don't care. Like Club right. One doesn't care, uh, but most of your big big chains are like, no, you can't go and work for a, com- a company that competes with that. Mm-hmm. Um, do they say you can't private train either? Yeah, you can't do any. Like oh, when yeah. we were at 24 Hour Fitness, you can't. I remember that. You yeah. can't private train. You can't run boot camps. You can't do anything that's yeah. not. That's not involving them because, and I get it. They spend you know twenty something million dollars a year for advertising to drive leads through the the mm-hmm. store and like, you know, is that fair for a trainer to to take uh, leads from there and potentially pivot? And so I I have always understood that. Mm-hmm. Um, even when I was moonlighting myself, um, I it, I made it a point to not uh, get leads from from the facility. Like right. I, yeah. I was yeah. Like, when I left, I mean, that was a big thing for me, just integrity wise. I'm like, I'm going to try and drum my own business out myself. I mean, granted, like old clients are going to find me at some point, you know, it's not like I'm going to turn business down, uh, but I'm not going to go through the old call logs and be like, Hey man, I'm leaving, you know, yeah. and which uh, I here's think where I'm gonna be I, I actually think from forget the non-compete and is, should you follow it? Is it allowed or not allowed? I think it's important that you do that to prove to yourself that you can build a business. Yes. If you're heading off on your own and you're quitting another facility and you're you're taking leads from that. Is it really you? Did you really create that business for yourself? No, you didn't. Yeah. And that's hard for trainers to swallow that. Like, well, I'm the great trainer, and I'm the one that re-signed them. They would never train if it wasn't for me. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But you would have never got the lead right. had you not been in that facility. So, for me, if I if I'm going to go out and I'm going to build a successful business, I need to know that I don't need that company to provide leads for me anymore. So, I want to prove to myself. Sure. That I could do that. So fuck the non-compete yeah. part of it. I just oh, want to yeah. prove that I can build a business. Well, Get that, you out of your comfort zone. That being said, let's say you're a trainer at a, a large corporate gym or whatever, and you've had clients for two, three, four years, which is not unheard of if you're a good trainer. What do you say to them when you? Because when I left 24, I was managing gyms and I wasn't training clients, so I didn't have to have this conversation. Mm. So uh, Justin, when you left, you went from. You went from you know working for twenty four to private training. Yeah, you had clients that had been with you for a long time. What did you say to them then? Uh, I, I gave them a heads up, man. I was very honest with with each one of my clients. Like um, you know, I was uh, that I was I was like trying to go into management for a while, and like that was like a direction I was going. But you know what? I didn't feel like it was a good fit, and I think that you know I'm just going to branch off and see if I can do this you know elsewhere in another gym and what I did right away was like start asking them questions about like other trainers in the gym like who they they see that might be a fit for them and then we I started conversations with other trainers and then so you tried to set I tried them up. to set them up and pair them off with somebody that really made sense for them because I know a couple other trainers that did that that I actually got clients from which I really appreciated you know and and we 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 built relationships but at the same time, I was like, you know, th- this is happening. Like, this is happening. This, this, like, I'm, I'm going to be leaving. Um, and so this is an option for you. And then I think I, I even, you know, kind of brought that so to So I Adam. dealt, I dealt, yeah, I dealt with this a lot, obviously, um, you know, training or leading trainers for, you know, eight years at 24. And I was different with every, with every trainer. So I actually have, uh, I've had falling outs with some of my trainers that I had really close relationships with because I got rid of them. I fired them because of the way they did it. Um, and I just didn't like it. I just didn't think it was professional. I didn't think it was fair. I didn't think it was right. Um, and I disagreed with it and they had a really hard time with it because then they'd seen how I let someone like Justin, like who, if you were some, if you were a trainer and you work for me and you came to me and you straight up said, Hey Adam, I'm, I'm going to be moving on to a, a private facility. I'm going to do this myself. 
and uh, you know this is this is my plan, whatever. I would respect that, and I would allow you to to hang around and still work at 24 to finish contracts off and to potentially hand some train some clients over or whatever. And I would allow trainers to do that. Now that's like a big no no. There we were taught like if once you like, know that cut them yeah, yeah right there right? cut all business right all they there. treat them like investment bankers. Like, yeah. as as <laughs> yeah, you're dead man walking and they shut you out of the computer. It's like dead man walking. Yeah, yeah no, yeah, that's yeah. T- that's so I I know I had that power always to do that if I wanted to do that, but I also had built good relationships with a lot of my trainers like Justin and wasn't trying to hurt them and sabotage them heading over. But at the same time too, they have to recognize that they are potentially hurting me. Right. And if this is a two way street, like, Hey, you know, I know you want to go do your own business, but you know, you're also responsible for $10,000 a month of revenue that you have been generating for me at this. And if you take all of that with you, you kind of fuck me. Mm -hmm. So I've had, I had trainers that, um, like for example, Ronnie was also another really good trainer of mine that I allowed this flexibility. And we kind of like made this deal like, Hey, I want you to drive new revenue all month long. Like I want you to take more fits than you've taken in a long time, drum up new revenue, and pass them on, pass them on to other clients or trainers, and we'll you know go off for several ways. And he did. He had a huge month for me before he left, and we remain having a good relationship because of how he parted. I allowed him to finish off contracts, and even allowed. And, and of course, the company would if they knew this, the company would be pissed at me for allowing him to take anybody, but that's just not how I did business. It's like, I believe that I got what uh, I got out of him more than anybody else would have. And by firing him, it would have hurt us more by just cutting him, cutting losses. Mm. But then I had other trainers who just completely would shut down at work, would be talking. They already left. They were ta- Yeah. They were, they were talking negative about the company, mm. you know, and trying to persuade the, all the people to come. They wanted to finish the contracts out. So it was an easy transition. And then they wanted me to be okay with all that. And I would be like, nah. And I would wait. I would wait to see and how they would. I would look at their character. Like, okay, like this is all about you. Fuck me. Like, no one cares about me. But yet, you want me mm. to go against com- company policy and allow you to finish. So I would. I would cut them. I would. I would say, hey, I know you put your one month notice in, but thank you for your service. Today's your last day. Now, inevitably, though, inevitably, inevitably, you're going to have the challenge of some clients that you're going to say. You know, hey, Susie, you know, I'm going to be leaving in a month doing my own thing. I love training with you. You know, what other trainers in here are you interested in? I'm going to set you up with whatever. Inevitably, some of them are probably going to say to you, I, well, I just want to go. Where are you going? I don't right. care. I really just want to come with you. Well, yeah, which happened. Did that happen to you? Yes, it did happen to me. And okay. I'd, and How did you handle that? Um, I tried to... I tried to pump their brakes a little bit and say, Hey, give it a chance, you know, give, give this other trainer a chance, like go through. And, um, you know, I was really just focused on myself and like trying to market myself and like mm-hmm. make, uh, an impression in, cause I transferred over to golds and then was trying to like get the culture there. Understand. Which was private by the way. You should it was make- private. Yeah. yeah. So I was like trying to like figure out everything about how I could market myself. I could like get new business. And so I was just like camping myself mm-hmm. there. And, uh, I really wasn't taking a whole lot of appointments, but, um, you know, after a couple months, like there were some persistent clients that just would, you know, like they would show up and they would talk to me and they're, and so, so eventually I couldn't help, you know, I couldn't help it. I, and I needed business. So yeah. there was a few of them that, that did find me and were lifers, you know, it was ba- mainly the lifers, like the, the two or three, yeah. you know, lifers that were like, were always going to follow me everywhere I went. But, um, yeah, I wasn't, I just wasn't trying to be sharky about it. I wasn't mm-hmm. trying to be sneaky. Well, that's, I was integrity. Like, well yeah. and that's also the reason why he was successful is because, you know, Justin went over there and prove that he could do that. I think it's it's a very, very common thing to deal with. I dealt with this a lot where, you know, trainers get to a point where they start doing well, they build up their they build up their uh, their backlog or their calendar or whatever filled out and they have an, a nice within uh, a big corporate machine model. Uh, right. And then they then super they super easy in that then environment. They, then they start to get a little cocky and then they, they bitch about, oh, I have to tuck my shirt in, I have to wear my name tag, oh, I have to show up at this time, oh, I have to come to this meeting. Isn't that and, funny, the stupid shit people oh, complain and about. And then they and then they start to just they they start to hang on all the things that they just think is so shitty about this place they work that has provided this, you know, seventy to a hundred thousand dollar income for them. And they think they can go off and go do it on their own. And 90% of them are fucking dead wrong. Sure, mm-hmm. they can go off and do it, but most of them, I know a ton of them still out there trying to be trainers. And I'll tell you right now, I know how busy they are. 
they were making more money when they were working for somebody else, man. Mm-hmm. They just they don't mm-hmm. understand the business well enough because they didn't re- they didn't recognize if you're if you're too naive to see it while you're working there, you're too naive to go start your own business. Mm-hmm. You're just not ready for it yeah. yet because there's there's a part of that that nobody talks about where oh shit, when I go start this private thing, I didn't realize that I wasn't going to see a thousand to two thousand workouts every single day inside this facility. And no one would be helping me put leads in front of me every day. And how much of that is important to your business? Because they all see like, oh, I have 20 clients and they all tell me they'll follow me wherever. I'm yeah. so good. They'll follow me wherever. And, and they think that's as far as they think. And they go, oh, cool. So they can. Yeah, and, and they do the math, right? 20 clients paying this much per session. Yeah, so they can go over to another yeah. private place. They start to. And sure, they're fine for the first six months, maybe even a year. Maybe in a year and a half, they even they even last out. But eventually, even the people that we call lifers and those clients, yeah, you some think, of them drop off. Some or... of them drop off. Some of them get sick. Some of them move. Some mm-hmm. of them get, lose their job. Shit happens. Mm-hmm. And now you have to find a way to replace them. And then you're caught, you know, up shit creek without a paddle, man. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, here's the other thing I want to ask you too, Justin, because you did this while you were working with Adam. What if you worked for just a shitty asshole manager? <laughs> Do you think you would have been as yeah, because I feel like if I worked in a in a in a company and I just hated the, like the place and the people mm-hmm. that I, uh, you know, I might be, I might have more of a tendency to be like, okay, yeah. well, I mean, the the temptation would be there, right? Yeah, like, because you know, yeah, fuck you, like you treat me this way, I'll take all my business with me, you know, yeah. like that's I'm sure some trainers are in that situation where. Um, you know, they can take advantage of that. Mm -hmm. Just know that like that kind of stuff, I mean, that follows you, you know, like that, that type of mentality. So I don't know. I think I would have been tempted, you know, but I don't think I I would have done. I don't think you would have because it's, it's still at the end of the day. And this is where I think people like Justin can see the bigger picture is that, okay. So if you, if you hate the environment you work at, you really hate your boss. You don't hate the company. Like, Mark Mastroff didn't do anything to Justin. Right. right you know what I'm saying? Mark great Ma- opportunity for him. Right. Mark, Mark, the man who created this opportunity for him, who has provided this place for him, did no ill will to him. Unfortunately for Mark Mastroff, there's 50 people between him and Justin as far as leadership roles. And so maybe the, the, those three leaders that are above Justin may have put a bad taste in his mouth or made him like hate the company. But for you, again, more, more being naive, for you to hate a company because you have poor management or poor leadership in front of you is, again, naive and stupid. So if you're going around bitching about a billion-dollar company that's provided you a position because you have a shitty boss and a shitty boss's boss, that's not a reflection of the company. That's a reflection of poor leadership there, which internally... Okay, it can be a reflection of the company, but that's not Mark Mashrow's fault. The, sure. the guy who created all of it, and you're in, you're by taking people taking his leads elsewhere, you're intent. You are fucking him. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So you got you got to be somebody. Well, people who, think they own they own that. You know what I mean? These oh, are yeah. my clients. They're right. actually not. Yeah. Contracts are not yours. The money's not yours unless you train the session. You're an employee, so it's just it's just not yours. And I think when you get employed, you do sign something that says that. Which here's the bottom line: If you say something, then follow through. Mm-hmm. Like, don't be a slight, a sleazy fuck. You know what yeah. I mean? You're gonna have people that are gonna, like Justin said. I mean, you're gonna have people that are lifers that'll say, like, I'm not gonna train unless I'm training with you. And that's you. up to them. And that's up to them. And they will follow you. And the great part about it is, you ain't gotta really say much or do much. They will just come find yeah, you, yeah. and they'll go wherever you're at. Yeah. And it's a really easy transition yeah. for the rest. And for the the other people though that are that are trying to bring their people. Because they want to make sure they protect themselves financially. They're weak. Those are the ones that are weak and that are going to that are going to lose yeah. out in the long run yeah. because it shit gets hard when you're by you yourself. Should see, well, you oh, should see how, how twenty million times harder. Yeah, you should see how banks handle this with investment bankers because they'll have their clients and their portfolios, and then they'll they'll get they'll want to go to another bank. The second they think you're go, they're, they will shut you out. No no communication, nothing. <laughs> yeah. and you have to be very careful with how you. Talk to your clients about it. That's how, the, and that's how the gym, the gym business is like that. I just ran my operation differently, you know. Mm-hmm. Like so, again, there was a lot of things that I did. I'm like you. I think if, if people respect me, yeah, I have way better odds of, of them handling things with integrity than if they don't. Even if I check on everything or, or yeah. put every safeguard in the world in place. Right. I've always been too. I don't want to ever burn bridges. You know, I've made that mistake. I think once when I was young and I was like working for a, a restaurant. And I just I wasn't able to get to work on time because I like my hours at school and I would hit traffic and I was always like making stupid excuses. And, you know, and then I basically was like, I quit 
on my own because I was like, this isn't working. Then I tried to get a job at that same restaurant that was closer. I'm like, oh, this would be more convenient for me. Guess what? Not hired. Yeah. You know, it's like I didn't think that, oh, they'd communicate with each other. (laughs) Weird. (laughs) You know, like it's just, it's just stupid, stupid ideas. I remember. That's a great point too, though. Wasn't there a no compete contract that uh, Mastroff had to do when he he left 24 I can't wait to talk to him about it too. I think it was like the day after that shit was up, right? Man, he had a five, it was a five. Five year non compete. He couldn't touch any other gyms around the, any of these other twenty fours, and I, I I do believe it was pretty damn close to the day. I, it'll be I'm, I can't wait till we get him on the show this month and to talk to him about it because I know that it wasn't it was long after that. Did I see him on TV with the announcement with uh, <laughs> right with Dana White? Just Here salivating. comes UFC gyms. You yeah. know, like yeah. oh shit, so awesome. bam. <laughs> so check this out: mindpumpfree.com. We have free guides. That will help you, and this free free information will help you uh, depending on your goals, right? We have one for your legs. We have a guide on how to train your arms, your midsection, a guide on how to do high intensity interval training, fat loss. There's like eight or nine guides on there that are absolutely free. You just go to mindpumpfree.com. You can download one of them, or you can download all of them. Also, you can find us all on social media, and you can contact us on social media. It's on Instagram. My page is Mind Pump Sal. Adam is Mind Pump Adam, and Justin is. Everybody want to take a guess? Mind Pump Justin. That's it. The number one. Thank you for listening to Mind Pump. If your goal is to build and shape your body, dramatically improve your health and energy, and maximize your overall performance, check out our discounted RGB Super Bundle at mindpumpmedia.com. The RGB Super Bundle includes MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, and MAPS Aesthetic. Nine months of phased expert exercise programming designed by Sal, Adam, and Justin to systematically transform the way your body looks, feels, and performs. With detailed workout blueprints and over 200 videos, the RGB Super Bundle is like having Sal, Adam, and Justin as your own personal trainers, but at a fraction of the price. The RGB Super Bundle has a full 30-day money-back guarantee, and you can get it now, plus other valuable free resources at mindpumpmedia.com. If you enjoy this show, please share the love by leaving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes and by introducing Mind Pump to your friends and family. We thank you for your support, and until next time, this is Mind Pump.